Hi, everybody. Hello. 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 Hi, man. <laughs> Uh, it's good to have you back, Vorpal. Yeah, good to, uh, you know, interesting to be here, I'll say yes, that, yes, <laughs> at, yes. at one of your tables. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. In advance? I, in advance. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm sorry for, for, for having you here. I'm, don't get me wrong. I am incredibly happy that I get this table to be able to play with. I'm just... I'm just really sorry. <laughs> you do realize we signed on for this, yeah, right? I okay. know, Aki. Yeah. I was going to say, is it weird yeah. that I'm looking forward to this? I'm so okay. excited. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad to hear it. I'm I, still I... waiting for my Jenga apology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you will never get it. Oh, I mean my wooden block apology, my wooden block tower your, apology. Your, your, your bo- <laughs> yeah, well, you, like I said, you will but never that's... get it. So okay. you knew. You knew what you got. <laughs> we had that talk. Yes. You knew what was up. And now you're here again. I so uh, I am stoked because there are some people I have not played with before, So, which I'm totally happy uh, yeah. to have at my table. So Alex... And Aki, thank you so much thank for, you for joining us. us. And then I got some vets over here. Vet. Bam. And Steph, it's been a it's been a long minute. It's been a minute, but I don't get a high five or anything. <laughs> How about this? Do you want a sandwich high five? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Okay, that was sandwich high that five. Was, so I thought I would give no, you that serious cross on talks. Could say it. So yeah, but yeah. The, this is good. This is <laughs> I'm not here. <laughs> uh, but Very no, nice. it's I yeah. I mean, I think it hasn't really been since the early days. It's been since the early days. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe no survivors or something else, but when game, was the last time we your played? Your game? Game the game? Game the game. For sure, for board games. You made games. me a sandworm. Ah, uh, the bread. bread. Yes. Which I will never forget. Yeah. I he said, it. Ivan's having a game. Do you want to play? I said, yes. He made me sandworm bread. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a cinnamon um, cinnamon raisin bread. Oh, so delicious. That was wrapped up like uh, shai hulud. Mm. It had a little tiny uh, gummy bear fremen. Was that we're writing the worm. You made that? So I, I remember this. With a Amazing. recipe. Whoa. And yes. I've heard of that. It yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was from an amazing website, um, which uh, I'm, oh, I'm failing to remember right now. Um, but it's a it's a nerdy cookbook. Geekrecipes.com. So, mm. Yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, and it was great. It was very tasty, and it even came with like the 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 they called it the um, spice glaze. That you poured onto oh, it. Okay. Spice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, way to get us all hungry all right. before you. Yeah. Let's you know, eat. We, no. Yeah. <laughs> we By the go way, real hard gaming for three hours. Yeah, you haven't had food in three days. Okay. So we're gonna start with that. All right. So. Every, um, angry. <laughs> super <laughs> hungry. Uh, but before we get into characters, before we get into everything, for for those who may not know who you are, I think it is just appropriate that we learn who the player is before we dive directly into character creation. So. So, Alex, would you start us off, please? I absolutely would. Uh, I'm Alex Fru. I am a content operations nerd uh, here at the company of Geek and Sundry. The company. And the company, yes. yes. And uh, I do some voice acting on the site. Yeah, Yeah. great, man. So thank you. Glad to be here. A stiff. I'm Steph Woodburn. We're not looking at the camera, so I'm just going to... It's fine. You can look at me. I'm here. I'm going to look at you. Yes. Um, I am a Twitch host and a writer performer, yeah. and I'm so excited for this game. Yeah. We're going to win the game of life. No. Something like that. Uh, I... <laughs> No. <laughs> I thought it was a game of hope. So yeah, it is. It is. It is a game of hope, but also of expectations. Yeah, misplaced so. optimism. <laughs> Miss Vorpal. Uh, I am gonna look right at camera because you can't stop me. I guess. Um, but I, I'm Amy Vorpal, and I am a actor, writer, host uh, for a lot of digital companies like Nerdist Geek and Sundry, Caffeine, Buzzfeed, and College Humor. Yeah, that's good. It's like you have them in your brain or something. Yeah, I've written, I've written a lot of bios. Cool. Only recently was I like, can I add college humor to my bio? And it's like one of those questions where you're like, yeah, I think I think they wouldn't have a problem mm. with it. So. Mm. <laughs> the proverbial they. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly. Cool, cool, cool. cool. And Aki? From the proverbial day to the literal day. Um, I'm Aki, and uh, I do some hosting stuff here at Geek and Sundry, and I am also one of your moderators. Yay! Yeah. And I'm really happy to be here because I finally get to play with these people. Yeah! yeah. And Super Secret Project! Yes! 
Super cool. secret project. Super what does project. literal day mean, though? Literal they. Literal they. Got it. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, you're great. Okay. Well, then, as we, I think we will begin. So, as you'll see, you don't have note cards in front of you, but you have pictures of you. Um, I'll just briefly say that the reason you have note cards is because we are going to be writing your virtues, your vices, your moments, and your brinks on these. Mm-hmm. And we're going to um, hand them to our neighbors before. So, when they are burnt or used in the game, rather than having to toss them into the fire to get that wonderful effect, um, I will instead rip them apart. <laughs> uh, just yeah, same emotional. emotional. <laughs> just to give a little effect. something, a little yeah. something, uh, because uh, spoiler alert: um, live fire on sets is something that we have to deal with. Oh, so we, yeah, we know. Uh, you know. So let's start by first taking one of your cards, and I would like you to pass them to the neighbor on your right. Will you, yeah. Passing me. Will you please sure. pass that to Steph? Okay, yeah. here you are. Thank you. Oh, wait, to your right. To, so that would be Amy to Steph. Is that Amy? This is Amy? Oh, this is Amy. Yes. Okay. I thought you were Amy. handing me no. yours. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, I, I, adorable. Yeah, I'm nearly as adorable as Aki, but quite a little different. <laughs> and on this card, I would like you to turn it over, and I would like you to write mm. a virtue on this. Something that you aspire and hope someone to be. Something that you maybe see in yourself, but you are viewed upon others. What is a virtue that you would like to impose? What? And is this an internal thing or an external, like, it is a, des- a lot? It is a descriptive one word. 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 Yes, a descriptive word. So it can, if you want to be someone who laughs a lot, you can be someone who's amicable or someone who's joyful, something like that. This is a great picture of you, Alex. Thank you. <laughs> I wear a lot of blue, I, I figured out. <laughs> Just like a every spread of your life. <laughs> spread of Alex's life is he's, uh, he's blue. <laughs> yeah. It has been written. It has been written. That's why it's Sharpies. Where's my yeah. Yeah. That lovely smell? Yeah. Mm. I have to tell, I, uh, I will say that in a game earlier today, everyone has commented on the abrasive texture. I kind of don't mind it. Oh, of this? Yeah. Is it because there's no label? Yeah. I think. I didn't even notice. There, there you go. That shows something how deep <laughs> I'm not going to last long. <laughs> <laughs> that perception check is it's real low. It's just zero. Or it does feel a bit unflappable. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Or, or that. It Great. feels a or little that. alive. Well, let's um, pass it back to the left. Tree. Yeah, like to where it goes. A furry, furry peach. I'm, I'll take it. Okay, Back to I'm hoping that's my purple. virtue. Do we not look at it? No, we're going to read it off right now. Okay. Would you start for us, Steph? Yes, I am compassionate. Compassionate. Yeah. Great. Alex? I am protective. Protective. Okay, great. Aki? I'm empathetic. Empathetic. All right. And Vorpal? Ooh, I'm super smart. Okay. <laughs> Did Steph write that one? Uh, did, yeah, Steph did. Okay, did. so super smart's fine. Uh, it's smart is is a virtue, but I would probably lean more into like intellectual or something okay. like that, just for future reference. Okay, so, um, keeping into it because super smart's technically two a, words. A oh, but uh, I, yeah, not the way I wrote written. it. <laughs> <laughs> One word. You put another capital S There's in there, cap- though. Yeah. yeah, but you know, with websites it's, and the way they are, like capitals yeah. don't necessarily. Okay, it's, it's you sweet. get a pass barely. <laughs> right it's the best hashtag ever. Be um, super smart in your head. Super smart. intelligent in your head. I, I do like doing virtues and vices as hashtags. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag super smart. Okay, duly noted. Um, now let's take another one of your cards and let's pass it to the left. Please pass that to you. Treat her gently. I shall. And then here, I'll I'll give it. Uh, Now on the back of this one, I would like you to write a vice. Something that causes more problems than it starts. And something that you would never wish upon anybody, except for you are now. I may be 0 for 2 in spelling. You know what? I think you're going to be okay, Alex. Yeah. No one's going to know but whoever you're handing it to. Yeah. And maybe me. So. You don't need to know how to spell at the end of the world. 
Uh, let's pass it back to the to the left. Okay. Back to their owners. There we go. <laughs> uh, Vorpal, would you start us off? What is your vice? Ooh, I am stubborn. Stubborn. Great. Naki? I'm vindictive. Vindictive. Excellent. I am vengeful. Vengeful. All right. Vindictive. Vengeful. I see a lot of hatred Stubborn. in this group. Stubborn. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And? I'm reckless. And reckless. <laughs> I Excellent. love it. Okay. Um, perfect. Then, uh, now is about the time in which I kind of tell you a little bit about what you're dealing with, where we are. Now, in full disclosure, we did have an opportunity to talk about this a little bit before coming to the table, um, but just to refresh everyone's memory, um, you will be playing 12 days after the monoliths have risen from the ground. And at this point, 12 days is fairly subjective because the sun doesn't seem to be rising or setting in any kind of regularity at this point now. Much like a popular television show, um, the nights are long and the days are long. And that doesn't seem to have any kind of normality to it whatsoever. So when I say 12 days, it feels like it may have been 12 days at this point, but it is night and the night currently is long. So, you, I think we talked a little bit about you dealing with the tidal surges that are a part of what has occurred as a result of these monoliths coming out into the ground. And having some foresight on these tidal surges, perhaps in the light of the day, you were able to make an excursion as far away from the oceans as you possibly could, watching as fresh lakes are basically being engulfed by these wide swath of water as it is literally tearing down everything, buildings, foliage, and animals as it's just making its entire crest upon the uh, the European um, landscape. And seeing that, you wisely chose to go the other way, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. So uh, we're going to basically start our situation with the post-tidal surges of day 12 leading into the night. The night has set a while ago and you have long since run out of food. And I know I was jokingly saying that it has been days without food, but now I'm literally saying it has been days without food um, since you've all eaten and you are feeling not only, you've, you've gone past the pains of hunger. And I don't know if any of you have fasted or anything like that in the past, but there is a point in which you no longer have hunger and you simply have just a chronic pain that exists with you until you're able to A, mentally push that past or B, able to internalize it until the next stage comes, which is the muscle fatigue. Um, Not quite there yet. Now, let's talk about your moments at this point. And moments are something that you will not give to anyone else, but it is your own. It is a moment that you hope to create while in this story. And should you create that moment and live through it, you will be awarded a hope dice, which now will become part of your greater conflict dice as you roll. This is a much, much better dice than the regular ones. Um, But it does have to be something that has the option of failing at the same time, too. Cool? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take a card, turn it around, and I'd like you to write that moment down now. Does this have to be something that can really happen? In real life? In this world or in the real world? Both. Yes. It It should be something that is possible but also has the option Can it be other player dependent? Like Absolutely, it can be other player dependent. Okay. Yes. And to be fair, this is something that you will hold on to. Um, we will talk about it here. It's not secret, mm-hmm. um, but we will be sharing it with everyone at the table. Okay.
everyone good? I stopped hearing scritching. Mm. <laughs> so we'll take this opportunity to not only learn about your moment, but also learn about the character that you'll be playing today. So, Aki, did um, you start? My moment is I find proof. May I learn who your character is Oh, my is character first. is first. Yeah, I'm please. sorry. Um, I'm going to be playing Cor um, Corin Jones. Corin Jones. Uh, that's spelled Q O. R I N Corin Jones. Excellent. Um, Corin Jones is a university student mm -hmm. who has been backpacking through Europe when all of this started and is now basically stuck. Yeah. Um, can't go home. And uh, they came on this trip with their twin sister. Ah. And uh, their sister has since gone missing. They have no idea where, she is. where they yeah, or where, where she they is. are. Where she is. Okay. Um, so. Uh, Corin, do you want me to tell you what Corin looks like too? Is, is that part of this or just a general idea of? I, if you feel it's important to distinguish it, then by all means take it. Yeah, it's. It's your there, twin sister. Yeah, Corin is my twin sister, and basically my my moment is I find proof that she's still alive. Okay, that yeah. was the moment that you yeah. hope to create. Yeah. yeah. What are you, the names? Are your? I'm Corin. My twin sister is Cora. Cora, got it. Okay. Okay. And Cora is also spelled with a Q. <laughs> got it. Uh, Corin. Versus Cora, yeah. great. Uh, Alex, who will you be playing today? Uh, today I will be playing Thomas Rhodes. Thomas Rhodes, yes. great. I am a Swiss watchmaker. Ha! Huh. Uh, cool. Nondescript uh, Swiss watchmaker. Yeah. Um, I decided to leave my hometown when my wife passed away at the beginning of everything. All of this. Yeah. And uh, did she go missing or did something happen? Something happened. Okay. All right. And I watched it. All right. And wanted to get far away from it. Understood. So I took it on the land and met up with some fine people. And You're with them now. I'm with them now. All right. Steph. And, uh, oh, sorry. Moment. The moment that you hope to generate. Yes, uh, please. My moment is to uh, do what I could not do for my wife. Save somebody else. And save someone else. All right. Duly noted. Steph, who will you be playing today? Uh, I will be playing Virginia. Virginia. And I am a pastor's daughter. Okay. I'm 18, so reckless and compassionate go great for my character. Perfect. And um, I, I grew up in what's con the equivalent of the Orange County of Croatia. Oh. And I just want to meet God. Okay. And or if a, a literal thing oh, is to that's feel. That's the moment. That's, that's the, the moment. moment you, you want but to the, feel God. Yeah, and and I want to. So the moment can be to feel a sign from above that yeah. things are going to be okay. Okay, duly noted. All right, Miss Vorpal. I mean, God, God's kind can be a dick. So maybe you might meet God and it's real bad. Um, In the Bible. Well, is this Old Testament or New Testament? Well, I don't know. Why don't you Can have the title? Why don't you have the title floods way. tell you something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> might already have been chosen. I'm playing Maria Ogden, and Maria, okay. Maria and she's a. Uh, QA slash customer relate client relations uh, director for a tech hardware company. Okay. Uh, came up through the ranks, you know, building computers as a child, and and at this point can now like uh, point anything. Say what's a good wire and what's a bad wire and what you know, yeah, all the knows stuff about cards and wires and uh, mm. data. Mm. Um, She's, she, uh, as far as any of you know, I mean, she, she's lost a lot already. Uh, she's basically virtually alone and, mm. a, and a pretty, um, impenetrable wall as far as emotions go. Uh, and, and that leads me to my moment, which is she wants to, um, feel love one more time before she dies. Okay. Mm. Feel love mm. one more time. That's wonderful. Um, finally, the last thing we'll do before we dive into our story is we will take one more card and we are going to write a brink. Now, a brink is something that you will write for your neighbor 
that you have seen them commit you, the lowest moment they've been some kind of dark secret that you have observed. It's often described in the book as I have seen you dot 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 and it is anything and everything that they would come to when being at a brink which is why it is titled as such. Now for Alex and Aki mm -hmm. you are in, both in a unique situation at this point because I will be participating in this exercise with you. What this means is, is that while everyone else will be sharing a brink for their neighbor, um, Aki, you will be writing a brink for them. You will basically <laughs> say something, I have seen them, dot, dot, dot. I have, it can be about the monolith, it can be about these proposed things that you have heard are in the ground. It can be about the circumstance in general, but it cannot be a weakness. And it is something that you will share with me in order to help continue to build our world. At the same time, Alex, I hope you're writing a brink for you. Oh, good. At which they have seen you. And it will be something that you will be aware of, but it's something that is also aware of them. Okay. Savvy? Cool. Cool. Then let's do that now. Do I take one, uh, do I take Aki? Sorry, we're gonna, <laughs> take, we're gonna take our, our things and pass. So we're gonna okay. take them to the right. Press them. Okay. Yeah, the right. so I'm gonna write there, you get this one. To stuff. Here Thanks. you are. Thanks. And so what I write is what that, what, what, what you have seen, have seen her character, character do, or feel, or Frankly, anything. Okay. Yeah. Great. So a quick reminder on just rules. You will roll, should a conflict come up, you will roll dice equal to the number of candles that are currently in the game. If you roll any sixes, that will, conflict is considered a success. If I have any dice from, dice being removed from previous actions, I will roll against you for narrative control. Otherwise, you may take liberties on whatever happens. At the same time, should a conflict flail, I will immediately snuff out a candle. The conflict will fail, and we will begin to speak truths about how the story unfolds ahead. Mm. Let's pass it back. Now, we will not be sharing these with everybody. Okay. Do we read them? Ooh. You should absolutely read them. <laughs> so, uh, before we begin, uh, I would like you to basically stack your deck. So the way that's going to work is you can put your virtues and your vices or your moments in any order you want. The brink must go on the bottom. Okay? And this is important because you will not be able to burn any one of the three cards that I'm talking about. 
I'm sorry, you won't be able to burn any of the two cards or fulfill the moment unless that card is on top. So you cannot fulfill your moment if your virtue and vice is atop it until you have burnt both of those cards. Okay. Likewise, you cannot burn your virtue and your vice if you put your moment on top until that moment has been fulfilled. Cool? Okay. Great. So make your stacks. Uh, we should have one that is blank. Right? The one that is blank is simply for your concept, your person, your name. Oh, can we put this in the pile as well? Uh, it doesn't operate as part of the pile. It's oh, kind okay. of left off to the side Got just it. to kind of be your name and who you are. All right. And do we want to burn these cards or no? It's up. It's really up to you. Okay. Um, if you don't mind me telling you a little bit of previous experience. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with burning virtues and vices even early on in the game. The, when you burn a virtue and the vice, it is only to reroll once. So, because if you do, if you leave those ones to be, I will mm -hmm. claim them and your dice pool is reduced. Okay. All right? What about burning a moment? The moment will not be burnt. It will only be fulfilled once the moment is on top and the m moment happens. Got it. A brink, should you get down to your brink, mm -hmm can be used to re-roll all the dice, sixes and ones included, mm -hmm. but you'll be acting upon that brink. If it succeeds, then it goes off and you get to keep your brink. It does not go away. But if it fails, you lose your hope dice, a candle is snuffed out immediately, and you must activate upon that brink. Mm. Right? Right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns? Then let's begin. <laughs> Your story starts in the rolling vineyards of Central Europe as you are traversing along a broken ground in front of you. Night has fallen, I don't know, 12 hours ago at this point and you have been walking since you have seen the water recede at this stage. So you are amazed at just how many insects are currently just chirping in your ear because the eerie quiet is otherwise completely just absorbing. There's no talking, there's no people, and this is, this is not uncommon. It has been a long time since you ventured out from whatever stronghold you were holding on to as you go into it. But just going into what you thought would be a highly populated area with many people, you were just surprised at just how ghostly and silent it is. That being said, the sounds of nature are still prevalent in what you're doing. And really the only things that you're feeling now is that chronic pang that sits in your stomach as you know that you haven't eaten anything in days. You have some water and you've been able to last on that for a while, but even that's slowly starting to run out as well too. So my question is what do you do? Two birds, one stone. Let's get some of these insects. Yeah. Oh. I'm vegetarian, I mean. but I thought about switching right now. I don't think we don't we have much of a choice. I mean, they sound they sound uh, taste as good as they sound. At this point, with so many days of hunger under your belt, probably anything would sound pretty good right now. 
Yeah, Virginia, I think we've all changed a little bit. And I think to help you survive, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to shove some insects down your throat. I feel like I'll be judged. I feel like it's going against my morals, but I'm really, really hungry. So. I think they'll give you a pass here. There's no one left to judge you, by the way. Um, did we talk about religion yet? Because you know I'm a pastor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, no, we, 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 we got that. So yeah, what, what's the, are we making like a large net at this oh, point? Oh, I see. Um, Where are we collecting? Are we hopping like four-year-olds on a creek trying to catch insects? Do we have a net <laughs> or a gun? We don't have any... Any way to light our our way? All of our like, do we have any like a flashlight or? You would have what like is that? in your pockets. Are any of these bugs like like glomming onto us or like flying around or oh, like? Oh, that's you know, a good point. Like, so uh, let's let's answer several of your questions okay. at one point. Um, normally in ten candles, it explicitly says you start with what is on your pockets at this circumstances mm -hmm. um, for your journey. I think it is fair and safe to say that you are basically working with a rag torch at this stage, and you've been walking with, you know, essentially a, a table chair wrapped in cloth, dipped into fluid, and has been carried with you. So that kerosene smell mm -hmm. is also just with you as you're walking around holding this oily piece of wood. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, 100% that would attract insects. Yeah, that would bring them to the point of where you could at least see them and their clumsy movements just hopping around as they stupidly slap into you and fall down and roll back up on their little legs and then hop again. And, uh, yeah. There are grasshoppers. I'm definitely trying to catch me some grasshoppers. Oh, nice. I can okay. use my shirt to... Yeah. Let's catch some grasshoppers. Mm -hmm. okay. Corn. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, that um, yeah, that, that, that started. Uh, we have two ones and zero successes. That's great. Um, Good start. Yeah. First roll. How you feeling? You know what? I uh, I'm gonna go ahead and burn my virtue, which is which is empathetic. Huh. Um, I can see how hungry everyone is. Uh -huh. and how desperate we're starting to get. And the last thing that I want to, is for us to start like losing uh -huh. losing hope because it could it could get really bad if that happens. Persistence through empathy. Yeah. So. so take those ones and re-roll them for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Uh, <laughs> no successes. No. Just no ones. Thus, oh. thus our, <laughs> all, we did, wow. all we did was try to eat. Here we go. <laughs> oh. and Getting off to a great start. <laughs> um, Corin, as you are trying so hard just to catch these insects, you, you know, um, were you handing the torch originally? Mm -hmm. You kind of hand this torch over to Maria, who, as you just start to like, class when you get farther in you slowly start to get farther and stray farther and farther away from the light as you begin to just grasp and hold on to these things as much as you possibly can and then out of nowhere you feel the ground fall out from underneath you as you tumble forward and you feel as the wind is knocked out of you <laughs> as you just feel like you're tumbling and tumbling down somewhere we have nine truths to speak now as part of how the story moves forward. And Corin, you have the pleasure of offering the first truth. Sorry, the first truth is the world is dark. But what truth would you like to speak? I've broken a bone in the fall. All right. You are currently in a set of dried brambles. By the way, for people who are new to it, Mm -hmm. I should say, truths can be both circumstantial and they can be um, like scenario around. You can also do things like fast forward in time as well too. Mm -hmm. So however you wish to play out your truth, just know that it is a truth. That's all. Okay? Sorry. 
continue. As I watch my friend tumble away, yeah. I do nothing to help. You do nothing. That is your truth. All right. We're at three right now. Four. Um, I run over to see if Corin is okay and secretly wondering if we're going to eat each other if we die. Is that a truth? So uh, if I'm interpreting your truth, it's okay. The way I interpret your truth, what might be interesting to say is, is that I'm considering eating my friends. Yes. Okay, because that can absolutely be a truth. But or you insects can... were a problem. Miss <laughs> 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 Vegetarian. That escalated <laughs> yeah. fast. So hungry. Also, a truth could be, too, that if a friend dies, you will eat them. Well, that's that's more of what I was thinking. Cool. Was like, that's I fair. I not anyone, but like, oh, no, Corin, But like, oh. Five. Maria, you're next. What is a truth? And this has to be personal to me of like what my no, character does. It can be anything that's happening. Okay. I mean, I, if you don't mind me saying, you could even say we get... Corin out of the bush. That oh, okay. would be a truth. Uh, I'd rather, I want, I want to say the, uh, luckily, the bramble she, the briar patch uh, they fell into is, um, is rife with, uh, like, grubby insects. Huh. You could have also said berries, but grubby insects are excellent. So, yeah. It's not like that uh, anything. Right? <laughs> I wanted to do something good, and that's what we all wanted, is to eat some insects. And what's better than a slug on a hot day? Yeah, nothing oh. better. Nothing better. No, the grubby kind that can't really hurt you. Boring. Uh I can still walk. Okay, that's a good truth. Um, you had the water. Did you say they had the water? They had the water. They yeah, had the I said water? You. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But thankfully, none of it was spilled. Ah, okay. Yes. Good, 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 wow. good. I made you use it. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> which is fair. Um, and I believe, Virginia, you get the last one, which is because we're at nine, and I believe yours was the eighth. So, Virginia. It's so crazy, but the bramble that they fell on top of is oddly on top of a large house that has a stocked pantry. I would probably, I would probably oh, wow. the the house, yeah. So you're on top of a house. Yeah. On top that's, of a house. That's great. That has a stocked yeah. pantry. Sure. Absolutely. Shoot. Mm. That was mm. that was too easy. Yeah. I knew it might not no. That's all right. We are now moving forward with nine dice, such as we have refreshed. And we will open the scene with Corin currently just ensnared inside of brambles. There are small nicks and cuts Ugh. all over you. And you, what do you do? Help. Someone, someone want to? Someone we're all going. Yeah. We're all going. Maybe I'm maybe so we much. didn't do anything t to stop you, but I for sure was yelling. Corn, what what th what the hell were you thinking? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ah, I think I broke something. What? Oh gosh. Ah. So you all run down the hillside using the torch yes, to I have carry torch you now. down. I think uh -huh. I had already run down. Yes. Oh. Can right. I reach out for her? For you them? can you can absolutely take an opportunity to try to fish them out of the um, the brambles. Yep. By all okay. means. Come on. Reaching to fish. Let's go. Out. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Great. One six and one one for me. All right. Um, I don't have any kind of uh, dice that have been awarded to me yet, so. Virginia, you are able to tell everyone how this went down. Great. Um, I reach out and I feel your hand, but this is the one that has a broken bone. Ah, not that one. Ah. Sorry. Mm. It's okay, it's Can't okay. Ah. Oh. I landed on something. 
And you look down and you land it on what looks like a sheet metal roof, which is some kind of like obstruction that you put all of your pressure on and landed upon. In fact, you heard the distinctive metal slam as if like a grate had hit on you. And it maybe is, I don't know, like some kind of handle or something that you just pressed down upon. At this point, have we arrived? You're all down there, and we you know, see this. I, to be clear, you you did succeed in getting them out. So even though you had this narrative ability to be able to oh, run, yeah. and how how did you have effectively get them out? I pulled out their legs. <laughs> they mm. still work. Yeah, right? that was true. So. <sighs> Virginia pulls you out by your legs. Okay, all right. Oh, uh-huh. God, <laughs> we, got, you, we got you. Oh, gross. Oh, and geez. like tiny, tiny cats that are covered across you, you feel scratches just <sighs> rake across your entire body as small pits of cloth and um, skin are just being pulled as Virginia oh, undelicately oh. just rips you straight out. Oh, thanks, so. Virginia. Thanks. Okay. That's, oh, oh my gosh. gosh. And you get down to see this now. You are covered in scratches. Yeah, I, I think I broke something. I couldn't get out on my own. Virginia had to get me out the only way she could, which is, you know, dragging you by your legs. Yeah, of yeah, course. I'm, yeah. I'm fine. It's, it's, but there's, I landed on something. There's a roof or something here. Okay. What, should we help you first? I mean, do any of you know how to set a bone? Um, I'd like to try. Do you want to do you want to look at it with the torchlight right now to go through it? Yeah, I'll okay. hold the torch. All right. All right so yeah, the torch now. Thomas holds the torch, and Corin, as you slowly, gingerly take off the coat, do you have an undershirt underneath it? Or yeah. Is it what you're wearing now? That's yeah, basically what I'm wearing. Yeah. So you take this denim jacket and you take the vest, or the vest that's actually uh, just a vest vest. So you pull it off and you can already immediately see the blood spot oh. that is currently just inside of where okay. your, is it, do you want to do upper arm or do you want to do lower? Yeah, okay. Here. And you kind okay. of look at it and you, uh, you can tell that um, not only, it, there is no, you see nothing has jutted through, um, but it is swelling. Yeah, okay. It hurts oh. like a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's going to hurt even more <coughs> before it gets better. Great. Wonderful. Uh, can I just do it? You want to set the bone? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, set uh, the bone! Right. Yeah. Do oh the cool. bone. Uh, you need nine. Okay. I get one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We lost one in the last one, so. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. I'm good at this. Yeah, you are. Great. Ooh, All right. Two, two successes, and two, two failures. Two for me. Two of those go to you? Yes. All, they just go All to you? All ones go to me, unless you want to use virtues and vices. But I have succeeded. You absolutely have succeeded. And uh, I get one dice to see if I seize narrative control. There's no way, because you have two. Uh, Virg- Maria, would you please tell me how you set this bow? Um, yes, there's a certain... Uh, nurturing motherly uh, I, I'm older than both of these students mm-hmm. and um, there's yeah nurturing way about me everything's very delicate um, and and friendly and and cajoling up, up until it can't be anymore yeah. and that's right when I um, I am it's okay it's okay we're, we're gonna get through this together oh is that where that hurts okay well that's okay let's take a look ah! And I just, I just have to do it on a surprise basis. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Um, they would pull away from me. So you, um, you, you nearly bite your tongue, um, but you go through it. Yeah. At the sound. This is the, the that's the right way to do it. There's no other way. They would have pulled away from me. Thank you. Holy crap, that hurts. You're gonna be okay. You're at least for now. And I'm, and I'm gonna. One of the brambles, uh-huh. you know, is probably a little straight, and I'll make a splint as. Oh, as, we'll see. It was, That's cool. Is that That's okay fun. as part yeah, of the? Yeah, part of it. So you basically here. you take a little bit of their coat. Yeah. Um, as well as the bramble, which you now after stripping it. Yeah. Um, yes. Basically, yes. make a small kind of string, and using okay. that, you make a very makeshift kind of arm sling made up of both their coat and the the bramble, which is now kind of tied over, so it keeps close to your chest. So Perfect. it's up right. to keep the swelling down, right. and it's pretty much up against your chest like this. So, yeah. oh shit, does it hurt? Yeah. Yeah. But it is at least set. Thanks, Maria. I'm yeah. really, really sorry. I just, I just wanted to 
help. I no, we're all I people. shouldn't have wandered away. I'm really I'm really sorry. We're glad you're okay. Yeah, we're, you 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 will be fine. We we will need to get someone to look at it at some point. I'm I'm no doctor, but don't don't say I never did anything for you. You should drink some water. Yeah. Fluids well, help. That's the first good idea you've had, Virginia. Um, listen. Let's take it easy. Yeah, you, the bag is gone. Uh, the bag. The bag? I don't. It did must you, have. Did you lose it on the hill? Must have. Oh. Uh, I take the torch and just extend it back and see if I can just find it. Just looking back. Yeah, just. It's not back. in the immediate vicinity from where you uh, where you hold it back. Well, if we're gonna go look for it, we better do it together. No more splitting up. Before we do that, there are these grubs here. And we know we're all hungry, and your chase for grasshoppers, we wound up finding some things that we could actually eat that aren't harmful to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's. Quick snack? They're not harmful. No. Just pop them into the fire really fast and give them the. We could use a bramble and roast it. That's not a bad idea. I don't have time for that. I just grab oh some and. <laughs> 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 all right, Thomas. So you me. you basically pluck the first big one that you can see, which is almost like a June bug kind of grub, yeah. and you just pop it in, and it. <laughs> I mean, it's it's odd because it it doesn't taste bad, but the fact that it's still moving when you're biting oh. into it gives mm. you that initial gag reflex um, <laughs> that kind of forces it back. And it, it's tiny little crawlers do kind of give you a little bit of a, of an odd moment. But once you get that first one down, it's um, uh, slimy yet satisfying. Mm. I think the moment Corin sees uh, Thomas do it, like they just, they go for it too. They go for it too. Oh, yeah, right. and I suggested it, so I for sure will not be left behind in on this the grub feast. feast. Absolutely. I'm trying not to throw up watching the <laughs> yeah. wriggles go down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, just, 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 mm -hmm. it's more. It's mm -hmm. more just the fact that they just are literally. They didn't even bother cleaning the dirt no, off of them. Crunchy. They just threw it right in, and you can hear it. It's an interesting texture. Uh, I'm so hungry. I am. I, I want to see you conflict to see if you throw it up instead. Okay. Oh, so she totally could. I take one and I think I am so so sorry, and I I, I put it I put it and chew it and I and we'll see if it it goes down. Yeah, right? if it goes down. We'll, yeah, we'll let's see. It goes down. Oh, it okay. goes down. Yeah, I get that one one. So question. Yeah. Would we be aiming to hold this is all the dice we get ever no um when oh, when you oh, fail oh, oh. the the di the candle will go out and the dice will refresh based on how many candles are lit it okay. is a decaying, a decaying dice pool dice pool okay. yes okay, okay. there we go you uh, can do this virginia <sighs> try not to think about it yeah. wow oh, right. he did it yeah not so bad, huh? I don't know. It, it's it's good bad. job, good job, princess. Pretty All right, bad. it's pretty bad. You're <laughs> it's bad, but at the same time, just just the knowledge and understanding that something is in your stomach, it, it's it's um it's holding it together at this point. Because you know, at this point, if you threw up, you would lose more oh. water uh, that you've been drinking yeah. more than anything else, and it's kind of that weird grit that kind of keeps you there, less than it is the the, the knowledge of eating a bug. Guess it's like four grams of protein. I, I wish you could see. You could have seen the contortions your face made as that bug went down. Yes. Uh, it's the funniest you've ever been. <laughs> Ready for another one? I, I am. Okay. So you, you basically, all of you, gingerly some, more aggressively others, you clean through as much of the grubs as you possibly can, all the ones that are visible and all the ones that are at least in as much of the top soil that you can find around I want to kind of keep close to that that sheet of metal that I'm pulling on because yeah. I while I'm eating I'm also sort of exploring that and trying to figure out yeah. what it is. Uh, having the light be a little closer, it distinctly looks like some kind of hatch. You guys, I think there's something down here. Hmm. Water first. Sure, yeah, let's let's try and find the water thing first, but 
Yeah, this looks like some kind of hatch. Might lead down to something. Okay. Okay. Come, come back for it. We can maybe. Let's... We've been walking for twelve hours, right? Yeah, probably longer than that. Maybe we can get the water and then hole up. Yeah, that would be a good, this seems like a good place to rest. Good find. Are we all yeah. decently full on bugs now? I mean, it's it's enough at this point. But <laughs> I do want nice. to see if you can find that water. So, Thomas, I do want you to mm -hmm. make a conflict roll, please. Okay, let's do this. All right. As you basically double back where <laughs> Quarren has moved, um, you... Uh, you lose track of where you are going and you find yourself wandering aimlessly no. up and down this hillside as you lose your bearings. And I can't even give you, there's no one here in which to have oh, you reroll. No. Uh, so, okay. Let's speak some truths. We have eight. You now have eight dice to work with. Thomas, let's start with you. I lost myself for a moment, but I found the water. You found the water. Okay, that's fine. Two. I think I'm going to hell because I ate these bugs. Okay, you're going to hell. Well, Three. I think I'm going to have that action, but that's how I'm feeling. That's your perspective on it. Yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. Um, um, so we got the water. Uh, there is a friendly, a friendly voice in the hatch. There's a friendly voice in the hatch. Okay. Five. We won't find any more food after this. Uh, aside from the fully stocked thing Who's that we already spoke to each other That's yeah. part of this game. It's, it's about telling on. the best story. <laughs> okay. You can't win 10 candles. <laughs> and it's not so you a. You just <laughs> might as well lean in. <laughs> lean in. Okay. Lean in. Uh, five. And so six. Um. Be gentle. Who are you talking to? I, I realized that <laughs> as soon as I said it. <laughs> friendly voice inside. <laughs> they sound friendly. Friendly voice in... The voice sounds friendly, but it isn't. It's not a denial. What I'm trying to say yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is that the voice sounds I knew, friendly. I knew you in yeah. in where? Yeah. Where's in the point? hatch. The hatch. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll go with it. Since, uh, since I found the water, yeah. I lost the torch. Cool. started one one two three four five six seven i saw a big shadow move over there big shadow yeah right? i mean it's 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 over there is probably about five eighths of a mile away Ah. But it's there. I saw something. Dark great. vision. Five eighths of a mile. <laughs> I don't think your dark vision would quite cover five eighths oh. of a mile. But is I there can... a moon? I just I thought I I thought I saw something move. Not sure if it's worth bringing up. You saw something move. It's perfect. And for the record, yes, the moon is incredibly bright. Oh. And very very well, big. Like... Yes, and very big. We're actually talking about it fills up a large portion of the night sky. Hmm. And last one. Uh, last one. Um, okay, so the hatch seems to be a little bit underground, mm -hmm. and there's there's a bit there's a bit of water at our feet, probably from the incoming tide, even though we've escaped the brunt of it, and it's uh, leaking into the. The, the water hatch. is leaking into the hatch. Yeah, from a from above. From above. Yeah. Okay. It's it's below ground. Yes. From what we can tell. Okay. Yes. Cool. Okay. So. 
the water is leaking into the hatch. Okay, great. Well, the world is dark. And now we start. That's always the truth. Normally that's the first truth, is the world is dark. But at least it's been said. So now we're going to start. I have start. a question. Yes. Didn't the, you said the other group had a truth for us. I did, yes. And that is coming up. Oh, it's coming up. Ooh. At this point. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Let's live in ignorance oh, as long boy. as possible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. okay. yeah, great. Okay. So um, you, we start the scene back up. You guys have... Uh, lost the torch, but you've managed to find this water. And, and losing this torch, to me, looks a lot more like the torch has completely burnt out, and there is no more accelerant to basically light it back to where it is again. Mm. So it's worthless, basically, at this point. But mm. you did find the water. And at some point, you do hear a loud, Hey! Anyone up there? Unless the monoliths speak English, I'm pretty sure that that voice. No, this is amazing. Is human. This is amazing. We found another another survivor. Yes, yes. There are uh, there are four of us. Can you help us? Are you armed? Of course not. All right. Do I... me a favor. Walk over to where you see the brambles. Do you see the brambles? We fell, we fell right in them. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Stand right in front of the brambles and don't move. Um, this doesn't feel right. Why doesn't it feel right? Of course because it- Because the hatch is not next to the brambles. The hatch uh, is at the brambles. Oh. Yeah. oh it is. So stand at the brambles? They want you to stand in front of the brambles. Uh, yes, yes. I, so you I, walk of course over they're it. suspicious. I don't think we should stand at the brambles. Virginia, what else are we going to do? They, they have cover. We wanted to spend the night here. What if they want to eat us? I- all right, Virginia. I'm just saying. You're, Some people I think, might be crazy. Maria's right. This is a chance for help here. I think half of us should not stand at the brambles. Virginia, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to fight you, but I also think you're being a little bit dramatic. I'm just saying there's some crazy people here. The, yes, everything's gone crazy. We have to take the chances that we're given. Come on, can we don't we, get Can you just ask them why they want us to stand at the brambles? Yes. Thanks. Um, before we stand right where you want us to, how can we be sure we can trust you? <laughs> I could say the same of you. That, what, what, what's at the brambles? Sorry. The cameras. I think they just want to check how many of us there are, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Cameras are my bag. I mean, I don't say that out loud. I, I might say this to these guys. Okay, cameras are my bag. Can I can I we... identify with? It's so dark. It's too dark. You're dealing okay. with the moonlight, and they are whoever's down there is basically telling you to go to the brambles. Okay. If you would like, I'm perfectly happy to have you see if you can look and identify mm. these because um, these what... cameras without getting too deep into it. I, I I don't mean to to sharpshoot the integrity of this voice, but. Are we certain that electronic cameras even work now? That's true. You're right. All of you're right. All of my electronics. It'd be interesting to find out. Oh, it'd be such a cool experiment. Um, I'm gonna say that because it's my truth that that it's a friendly voice yeah. that I'm going to uh, stand at the brambles. Okay. Then. So you walk over to the brambles, and you hear what appears to be a very light mechanical whirling. Just for a second, you look, try to identify where it might be. How are their electronics still working? It's working. I you, don't know. Uh, and you look down and you see nothing. You can't see anything. But then you, you go, you hear the voice go, I see one of you, but I heard other voices. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to identify the camera from here then. Or the okay. Cameras. Yeah, no, from where you are, um, you can, yeah, go for it. I, I, I love conflict roles, so let's do okay, it. Cool. So. All right, I'm good at these. <gasps> oh, 
four. Wow. <laughs> four ones, wrong. no oh. sixes. <laughs> wow. Huh. That's, uh, I, like, I like the intention wow. though going in. I thought that was very positive. Uh, it worked last time. Do, would, would you, uh, this would be one of those circumstances when I would recommend okay, great. a burn. Mm -hmm. So this is number one is super smart. Which yeah, is, all right, which very is appropriate. Mm -hmm. Very appropriate. Take those four ones okay. and let's see how smarty pants super smart. Nice. They're managing. I converted two ones into two sixes and the other ones Ooh. are four and five. Okay, Woo. great. Very good. Uh, nice. You, um, Useful. Yes. Okay. Looking down as you kind of hear this voice and in that split second when you see it, you do notice something. It is a tiny, it is, it is a very well concealed dome that is part of like a home security system. And you can see it's been covered really articulately with the brambles that are right where you are. Mm -hmm. um, but you can distinctly see, even with the moonlight coming down, the hint of a lens that just seems to be covered in this bramble And it's bush. below or above? It's below, it's like on the floor. Uh, then then can my my success, I, I definitely notice it. Can yeah. I also um, strategically like, I'm not gonna show any of my friends, I'll just like nod to them and um, I'll place, I'll, I'll be near it so that as soon as the hatch opens, I'm gonna stomp on it. Oh, okay, fair enough. Great. So you uh, um, you kind of seeing where the field of the camera is, I would definitely allow you to kind of get into a position a where you position. can kind of block it. Okay. And you hear the voice call out again, basically saying, I see one of you, but I heard more voices. Okay. Is it a male or female voice? Hard to tell between the oh. steel grate. Okay. I, I'm probably sticking sort of close-ish to Maria um, just on a basis of feeling a little bit of a, a Yeah, a maternal, she sent your bone. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> connection, and I, I'm really craving family connection right now. So, yeah. I, so like you get I, close to Maria. I, I do kind of get close so that they can see more than one of us. Yeah, Fe feeling that I will also join the group, knowing that most of them are headed in that direction, okay. and I'll stand in plain sight of. Okay, so I see three of you. Show me your hands. I just want to make sure there's nothing on you. Oh God, I haven't seen people in so long. I know. I can't believe it. <sighs> okay, here's the deal. I'm gonna open the hatch real slow. I need you all to take two steps back so I can take a look at you. Okay. Take That's two fair. steps back. That's okay. Fair. Yeah. Okay. So you both yeah. take two steps back. Okay. I know, we'll see how it is. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, but if you wanna go for it, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna stop you at all. And you kinda hear a, like, some kind of big, just mecha mechanism, just <laughs> And you hear basically a mechanical lock just kind of unload. It's, uh, I'm sorry, by, when I mean mechanical, I mean it's a manual kind of like a, oh. a when you hear like a, um, an airlock door being unhinged and you just watch as it pops. It just goes just for a second as if like a pressure seal oh, just wow. came out. And you see a hand, stark white, undirtied, and just kind of press up on top of the hatch. And you see just hair, just muzzled, no. frazzled hair and two just pupils fully dilated beady eyes lift their head up and kind of look at you and <laughs> okay. okay 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 opens the hatch along is still can't tell at this point if it's male or female or what it is it's just just Dusty, frazzled hair everywhere. And he kind of here goes, <laughs> Well, you're alive. Yes. So are you. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hmm? I'm, how, I'm, how, how long have you been down there? Three months. Three months? No, nah, three years maybe. I'm not too sure, honestly. I don't really tell time too much down here. You wanna? Well, How many of you are there down there? Me. 
Just you. Me, just me, you. Just me. Just me. Just me. Yep. Mm-hmm. You got a name? Mm, you can call me Starchy for now. Starchy's fine. Starchy. Holy shit. And you see Starchy is like now at this moment looking at the giant fucking moon that is in the star and the just covering the horizon and almost goes, yep, mm, that makes sense. So, yeah. All right. You want to come in? Uh, yeah. Does, does Starchy look well nourished? Uh, yeah, I mean, beyond just the frazzled hair and kind of this beaded look that, and I can already see the question in all of your eyes. It's like, how can 12 days turn a person like this? Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they don't look malnourished. They don't look like they've been, you know, uh, uh, abused in any, except for maybe self-abuse at this stage as far as hygiene might go. Okay. Um, but that's what you got. Okay. Um, on the way in, I, w- I want to make sure that I at least surreptitiously make eye contact with Virginia because she hasn't been seen yet necessarily. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to like questioningly, yeah, you don't know. Okay. And th- but on as we move towards there, I do want to step on the camera. Oh, just step on it. Just like try to cover it with your foot, right? Try to no. Try to. G- Get rid of it. Oh, break it. Break oh. it. Yeah. Oh, like full blown break it. Yeah, I'd call that. That's that's worth a roll, because that's okay. whether whether or not we'll see how that resolves. Okay. Make money, no money. No one, ones. But right. one success. But one success. Okay. So Starchy does not hear the loud crunch as you basically step on what it is, and I mean to be fair you probably aren't breaking the camera so much as you're taking all of the mud and goo that you have, you know, accumulated on your shoes at this point and just smeared the crap out of it at this point so that at least as far as outward visibility goes, it's mm, compromised. Yeah. Yeah. So you watch as kind of like Starchy just has this hatch up and starts crawling down, and um, if, and again, tell me if this is not your intent, but as you all are kind of coming down the hatch. Except with the, for Virginia, except I just for wonder. Virginia. Are they leaving the hatch open? You hear Starchy as he's coming up, and they yells to uh, whoever's last, and he goes, shut the door behind you! I'm like, I think uh, okay. because because of my arm, I'm probably in between yeah, the two of you. Yeah. yeah, okay. So do you not so shut I'll the door? First. I shut the door. Okay. You do? I, I shut it. But not like jot gently. I, I, I. You, you I, actually I like full blown shut it. Do not see her <laughs> making the motion to not. <laughs> so you, close it. Virginia, hear this just <laughs> as Thomas is. Uh, uh, oh. oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Here are things yeah. out there. <laughs> Don't you see? She's not with us. I could have saved you. I to yell at the hatch. I could have come in there just in case anything happened, but no. To, to no, no. Yeah. Um, so you uh, climb down and you see a well lit hallway. It is the first time you have seen anything this well lit ever in two weeks. It has been a world of darkness, but this fluorescent light is just feeding mm. straight mm. into you and it is sterile and it is exactly incredibly unsettling in its contrast to the above world and starchy kind of just how did you find this place mm, i made it it's mine it's mine i made it mm-hmm. you made it yeah yeah starchy if you haven't been above the surface in months or years a lot has happened in two weeks. And you said you it makes sense to you. Yeah, you know, I know. Yeah, so two weeks is when everything bad happened, right? Well... How do you know that? Did you see I had cameras up there? Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the water. I saw the riots. But why does this make sense to you? You see that honker up there? That 
big old Wonga Dong yeah. sitting in the sky. What's the moon do? Mm-hmm. No, yes, it makes the tides. Yeah, sure. it makes the tides. So it's it's messing up by the, its distance to Earth. Yeah, by like a factor of ten thousand. Do you see how close that thing is? Yeah. Yeah, no. we've been living it for the last two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> it sucks. But were you, did you predict this? How did you know oh, that no, you needed a no, bunker? No, no, no. I just just like bunker life, I guess. You just did it for fun. No, no, I just, I knew something would happen, (laughs) you know, (laughs) something is going to happen, whether it's, you know, the world falling apart or the riots or the government failing or the moon just decides to come and pay Earth a little visit. I don't know. It's something was going to happen. I'm going to casually glance around and see if I can locate the monitors that yeah, are so, attached to those cameras. Um, even though Starcheat has a pretty well-encompassed <clears throat> thing here, it's very difficult and expensive to build anything with any kind of lasting. We're not talking – it's not like a, it's not like a compound underneath. You're basically looking at like a one-bedroom apartment down here. And okay. so the monitors are – like instinctively as soon as you come through. It looks like maybe what Starchy had done in this circumstances had, had taken two containers from like a container ship and basically buried it under the ground because oh. you can see the kind of ridged walls with spot welding done everywhere as far as stuff had done. And at this point, you can actually see that Starchy has started taking buckets and has put wires on top of a lot of the bucketry there because one of the things you notice when you started you know stepping down into this place was the small amount of water that seems to be accumulating now at the bottom of this crazy compound is this how you've been collecting water for no that's new that's new don't like it and I should probably pump it out yeah that's probably the next thing to do next. there's no way for you to make it like potable so you can drink it it's groundwater. I mean, you can drink it. I mean, it's probably going to have whatever is in the ground that you can have there, but I, I, I drink dirt water when you've got carbon water. Uh, w- uh, you're so kind to allow us mm-hmm. your abode. Mm-hmm. Yes. We're really looking for just a short a place to rest for a short time. We've got to be making our way further inland. Um, oh. If you don't mind... We just need some hours to, as you can see, my my friend here has broken their arm. Oh yeah, no, I can, I can, I can help you take care of that for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, come on over here, and you kind of start. She leads you into the the bedroom, the one bedroom that's in this whole place, and kind of sets you down. And you can see there's several cabinetry that's kind of laid out. Um, where it is, and it, <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a fully stocked medical supply. I mean, we're talking oh, morphine, wow. we're talking, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know, splints like a like a real splint that you could actually set the bone with at this point. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, this is this is a prepper's dream, what you're in right wow. now. Wow, wow. Yeah. Starcher, are you a doctor? Mm, no, no, no. Um, more of a more of a self-learned doctor, really. <laughs> I've uh, I've set a few animal bones over the years, just you know, uh, trying it out. <laughs> I have a friend who would okay. like you very much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So here, you you it looks like you've already tried to do that a little bit, right? Yeah, but I don't think this will hold up once okay. we leave. Me. You kind of before as you're talking, she kind of grabs their other arm, the not the broken one, but grabs this one, and has already taken some iodine and has you know like. Uh, yeah. sterilized this part of your arm and it's just shoved an IV needle oh, straight ow. into your piece. So ow. right there. It goes, okay. And she takes a saline bag. Are those antibiotics? Mm, no, no. This is the morphine. You'll like this. Um, and, excuse me? And you basically watch as like a drip starts going right into it as the morphine starts entering into your system. Hold on. So. We, maybe we're being a little hasty with the painkillers <laughs> here. I, <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it's going to hurt otherwise, like big time. I mean, I mean, you did this, right? That's right. Yeah, it's not a bad job, but we're going to we're gonna need to go in there. I say we let it happen. Look look at everything they've got. And uh, you, I, at this point, while okay, you two are okay. talking, the, the gonna be starchy okay. is gonna just be okay. kind of settled in here and is, and is taking the arm now and taking your makeshift branch with the coat splint and kind of brings one of those metal 
surgical tables and like puts your arm right up on there and starts looking at it. Okay, mm, well, it's not broken through the skin. That's good. Oh, but you got swelling. Swelling. Mm, all right. Well, we're going to we're going to bleed that real quick to make sure you don't get in any internal stuff and they're doing this action while they're talking about it. Okay. It's almost like they're just talking to themselves <laughs> and using Quarren as a little bit of like a, an experiment at this point. So, you know, they 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 bleed whatever's left in there because it, you can see that it's starting to puff up a little more. Okay. So they, they get all the excess blood out of it and they basically reset the bone. Well, you don't feel a damn thing. <laughs> At this I'm just point, laughing at the funny way that she talks, and <laughs> and uh, uh, and and after a few short minutes, treated minutes, basically um, uh, resets the bone, stops the internal bleeding, and then puts a real splint onto the board there. So, all right, cool. Well, that's done. What's next? Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank Draining you. the container ship. That's right. That's what's next. Do you have any food? Uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And she kind of like motions behind where they are and kind of like looks at, you can see it's three or four um, floor to ceiling cabinets that are kind of laid out. And um, they start <laughs> basically <laughs> bailing water, like putting into buckets and just starts filling it up and seems to be pouring it into some kind of like a potable toilet. Okay. Yeah. Corn, are you okay? I feel great. Okay. Do you think you can get some rest? Hmm? Can you close your eyes and sleep? Sleep sounds good. Okay. But I really want something to eat that's not oh. bugs. Okay, I can handle that. Okay, I'm gonna help our, our friend. Okay, and then maybe our other friend. Right. Right. Maybe in reverse order. Maybe we should I'll go do that. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna kind of make my way back uh -huh. down the uh, hallway and back up to the where ladder. the ladder is. Yeah. And okay. uh, just, I'm gonna check on our friend and just climb up and pop open the. All right, so um, we'll get to the, the food real quick. It's a little quicker sure, to sure. resolve. Okay. So, um, Maria, as you walk over to the cabinets, you pull open. Um, uh, the first one, it's it's empty, completely bare, nothing there okay. whatsoever at all. Um, and you move over to the second wardrobe and pull it open. That one, it definitely has food inside of it. It's actually quite a bit of food. Okay. Maybe about half of it is gone at this point. But it's canned. canned it's uh, between um, uh, powdered protein, uh, canned goods, um, MREs, or the European equivalent of MREs, which mm -hmm. would. You probably not have the acronym MRE. Okay. Um, and a lot of other, uh, yeah, uh, everything from. Any, um, any canned peaches or fruit that have that <laughs> delicious syrup? It is, uh, it is not, there is not many of them, um, but there is a few. Yes, it seems to be one of the like starchy delicacies that they don't seem to touch too often. Okay, well, I'm no, I'm no bitch, so I'll leave those there. <laughs> okay. um, um, but I'm assuming you probably grab some of the ones that are really easy to just yeah. rip and then dive into. Uh, yeah, right? beans. Yeah, okay. So you make a meal for the three. Thomas, as you start hearing your feet clung up the rungs of the ladder, you hear start to go, wait, 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 where are you going? And you hear as they kind of like come around and the splashing of the water just kind of comes and goes, what are you, what are you well, doing? Just, uh, I, I figured uh, I need to check on our, our friend real quick, real quick, and then we can help you. Friend, there's more than one, two, three of you? Well, yeah, we said, we said there was, there was, we said there was more. I remember one, two, three, not four. Get down. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, I'll climb back down the ladder, and just kind of approach him or her slowly, and just be like, "So, truth time." Kind of lied a little bit, truth and I time. really, yeah, I really want to check on our friend who's. Who's outside? And th this is my fault. I I forgot. I forgot, and I closed the hatch too quickly. I'd like to make up for that. And, oh and no! Just, we can't leave. And just check. Oh. Uh, but but 
But she said they're bone. <laughs> oh. One success. No ones. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Starchy kind of looks, and you can see that they've got that tick in their eye um, that you're just starting to notice now. And um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of enough. looks to you and goes, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, mm -hmm. go, uh, go, 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 go get them. Bring them, bring them back down. We'll do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And I'll just. And as you're walking, they kind of stay surreptitiously, maybe awkwardly behind you a little bit as you climb up. Okay. So. Yeah. And uh, very, very just look. I'm, I'm, see, yeah, uh, no, no foul Super play transparency. here. Is going to open the Virginia. You hear as the hatch opens up. Well, can I have looked around to see if there's other entrances? Oh, absolutely, to it? Okay. yes. Just because so, there has to be air, unless I, I was there must be in my head, there must be some type of air or watch something is going in or out, unless it's just a vacuum. But I was right. looking around. That's that's great. So, um, around the brambles, you can definitely see that the brambles are ostensibly like cover for here, you know, without a mm -hmm. doubt, you know, and um. Uh, since it has been raining a lot, otherwise there wouldn't be any reason for the groundwater to start swelling the way that it was. Um, it, it, there's air holes. You can see them now. Like, they're covered. They're just mm. basically tiny little spouts about this big that have a clear bug grate on it so that nothing can get in. Mm. Um, and you can see they're only, they only stick up out of the ground about that far. Um, I see. And it takes a while, but you, you do kind of... Um, uh, uh, notice them with the limited dark vision you have as you do a perimeter around it. So, okay. And as you're doing this perimeter check and looking for these items, um, you do hear the loud choo -choo -coo of the distinct sound of the hatch opening up, and you do hear the hinge just. Hey, Virginia. Oh, hello there. Hi. Uh, <laughs> So I, I I apologize that 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 was that was my bad. Uh, I, I I got flustered. I was very excited to to get in some place clean and get some food. So come on, come on down. We've we've got food. I'm like whispering like it's helpful. We can do this. Oh yeah, yeah, very helpful. Morphine treating the wound like it's okay. Come on down. Can I grab just a mini? I had a mini bramble that I can I just have like a tiny little. It doesn't won't help anything but best my own feeling of feeling okay. protected. You can literally I have a little bring a tiny bramble branch in my hand. Just a little bramble branch. Just a little bramble branch. <laughs> um, as you hold on to this bramble branch, coming down, you kind of go down, and Starchy is right at the bottom waiting for both of you, like like right there to the point of where you can't really turn around without like kind of brushing into him. And Starchy takes like one dramatic step back and sticks his hand and goes, Starchy. Wow. Thomas. Good. Thomas. And you watch this kind of like as you do the shake hand, you, uh -huh. they pull you kind of lopsize of them and puts you back the other way. Okay. And watches you come down Virginia and goes, Starchy. I do the same thing. I put the bramble in my other hand and I shake the hand. Grab the hands and uh -huh. starts pulling you in and sees, oh, nope, that goes back outside. No contaminants in Starchy's basement. What's that? That. My good luck charm? That. It's oh. bad luck here. Not good luck. You don't want any piece of the earth in here? Mm -mm. I worked hard to make sure no earth gets in here and I don't want any blackberries in here. I've got them in the back already. Plenty of them. I kind of look at you and I'm thinking, Maria, this is person okay. Do what they say. Mm -hmm. Do what they say. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I look yeah. over and check out Corin. Corin's passed out. Well, and you wouldn't be able to see him down the oh, hallway okay. as well, too, since I, to, I just room. try to see around. Yeah, no, no, I'm here. I'm here. Right here. Right oh, here. Yeah, hi, 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 hi. Yeah, eye contact is very polite. That's true mm -hmm. okay i'll just go put this right back upstairs great okay i'll stay here so i climb up i put it upstairs take one last breath of fresh air 
think, what have we got ourselves into? Close the hatch on your way down. <laughs> I say goodbye, moon, in my head, and I'm like, um, I want to see you again. Having heard these, this neurotic, like these neurosis, this, mm -hmm. these neurotic conversations about like what starchy allows and what they don't allow, yeah. I'm, I'm going to search the med bay for things like scalpels and sharp objects. Oh, cool. And, yeah. Um, maybe poison slash you know sleeping reagents or some you know yes. just like what. I, I'm getting I'm getting a sense of claustrophobia already. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I want I am looking for something that they also might try to experiment with. Right. So um, as far as medical equipment goes in this time, y yeah, you yeah. would definitely see things like scalpels, scissors, things that can be used to cut treat people that okay. could potentially be used inappropriately, uh -huh. lethally. Um, it, Starchy has kind of everything laid out in front. There's not a lot of hidden items in here. Okay, because if I've only got what I'm wearing right now, I'm going to slide a scalpel in my boot. Oh, okay. All right. And and um, okay. maybe take one of those, like, I don't know if there's a morphine-filled syringe or, like, something. Oh, there wouldn't be. There's just the vials that just they use vials. to kind of, you know, pop in if you wanted to take the time. I would let the scalpel happen okay. while this all occurrence is going down. Then the scalpel happens. Then the scalpel happens. But you do definitely see needles, for sure, mm -hmm. to, you know, be able to put stuff inside syringe, of it. Needles, yeah. They're not in the same area where the med bay is. You do absolutely notice there is things like bleach, lye, rat poison, things like that mm. that are absolutely in here as well, too. They're on the bottom shelf, Okay. you know? And, um, I mean, there is not an inch of this place that doesn't have some purpose or some uh -huh. kind of cover in this area, for sure. Yeah. Mm. Bleach, huh? Mm. Jeez. So, okay. you come down and start you, uh, again, uh, kind of as you close the hatch, <laughs> down and starts you goes uh, starts walking back and go make sure that you check the hatch and goes okay and then comes back down and sits down and goes to goes back to their like central station uh. you know they kind of like grab a piece of hair and kind of like tuck it back into there and pull their hair back a little bit and then just it's right into typing something okay okay yeah i'm gonna make for the food all right yeah Repeat that conversation with you. Do you go for the peaches, though? Uh, I don't. I do not <laughs> go for the peaches. No, no. Those are those are on a on a pedestal. Uh, yeah. I go for what? What do you, what are you having? Uh, I, I've got baked beans. Ooh. Yeah. Great. I could go for some baked beans. Yeah. Mine. There's plenty. There's plenty. Um, yeah. Maybe I, I have made plates for people. Great. Okay. You're starting to dish out the first decent meal. You've had in a, maybe a week. Yeah, wash the taste out. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you sit with this, um, you know, with <laughs> if you can believe it, paper plates. Um, wow. wow, really prepared for the apocalypse, weren't we, Starchy? <laughs> Starchy's on it. Single use items. <laughs> Single use items. Um, as you uh, as you prepare the food in front of you, and you kind of just uh, watch as uh, Starchy just seems to be in some kind of closed loop, just like. Typing seriously, like 80 words per minute <clears throat> typing kind of a situation. So, wow. you know. Yeah, I'll just eat the beans and just kind of, hey, uh, Starchy, what you, what you working on? Keeping a log, keeping a log, got to keep a log if you're going to go to a bog. Uh, yep, that's just my diary, everything I need to do, want to talk about who you are, which reminds me. I'll swing around and look at you. Who all are you? Um, my name is Maria, hmm? uh, and I... Starchy. Yeah. Shakes the hand. Yes. Th thank you so much for your hospitality again. Mm -hmm. uh, no nothing really to note here. Just trying to fit. We're really trying. We're trying to survey what really is happening. So far, we have figured out as much as you told us. The moon is is mm -hmm. responsible. Yeah. Its I'm, vicinity to the Earth. I'm thinking about that too now. Yeah. Actually, I was uh, running some numbers, just looking at about the giant radius of the moon right there. I'd say probably the whole thing is about. Mm, It's about 115,000 miles from the Earth now. That's too close. Yeah, no, absolutely. That yeah, no, that's way too close. Definitely explains why you're talking about tidal surges. I'm assuming most of the West Coast is probably gone, right? Or did you... 
Where'd you come from? We're, we're from, thankfully, inland. Um, no, the, the, we, uh, we don't really have much information about any of the coasts at oh, this okay. point. All right. Hmm. But you're probably right. I, I, I assume I assume. Most That's fine. You haven't seen underwater. it. It's still worth noting. And she kind of turns around again and starts taking notes while you're trying to talk to them. Yeah. They're just kind of now writing down this, this new information and kind of just typing it back into the system. So, you know. Can I ask about your the the power? Huh? Power? Yeah, just curious how your uh, machines run. Oh, yeah. I was studying um, uh, one of the subjects at school I was studying was computer programming language, but we always needed power for our computers. So. Yeah, no, power and computers are really important. They need to go together to work. That's what I learned, too. Yeah, cool. Okay, she all right? Uh, she's she's yes. Okay, cool. Um, that's, that's just yes. Fair. Power is necessary to make the computers work. I had an outage about two weeks ago, but I just popped in a new battery on top of the self-generating machines over there, and everything butted back up pretty good. Oh, interesting. That's... Self machines. Self yeah, no, it's a uh, actually. Don't mind, I'm running a little low right now. You get a pass. But would you mind? Do it what? You kind of, they're motioning over, and you can see that there is a, a pedal bike that's just like oh, stationed off okay. into the corner, and it just seems to be bolted into the ground. Um, yeah, sure. I haven't had a workout in a while except for walking for 12 hours. Okay, great. I'll Thank go. you. I appreciate that. Yeah, again, we're, we're looking for a time to just short... Quickly rest and then and then move yeah. on our way. We don't want to take your power away or anything. Yeah, we'll, certainly don't want to impose. Well, uh, well, well, mm. but we're happy to we're happy to pedal. Some. And I was mm. thinking before I even took a rest, maybe maybe Jonathan and I uh, might be able to fix uh, pump out some water for you. Maybe fix that situation. Tom. Yeah, I'm not sure um, who who Jonathan Thomas? is, but but I, I would, <laughs> oh. would love to do that. <laughs> yes, Tomathan. Like I said, no, that's not no. no. That's no one. I'm sorry. I. That's not gonna work. No. I blipped. No, no. Sorry. What's not gonna what's, work? What's not gonna work? No, you can't go. You yeah. can't leave. <laughs> you just got here. And we won't leave for a little while. Mm. But you're going to. We have to. We have to. We. No. That's... Why? Why leave? Why go up there? We've. Some of us are looking for people. No, you. You have. Starchy. We volunteered to find information and deliver it back oh. to the other survivors. No, 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 no. You go you just can got come you with can't. us. No, no, I can't. No, of course not. I can't go outside. No, 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 no. Have you seen that thing? And plus, Starchy. you have to keep the log. It's and yes, and I have to keep the log. I have to keep everything so that okay. when it all goes, someone has something. But you can't go. You can't leave. Starchy, look at us. We have to, and I don't know what on earth you think you could do to stop us. <gasps> I, I, I walk by, I give Maria a very meaningful look, and I start to pedal just to do something that Starchy wants us to do. But I say, Starchy. And uh, Starchy is now hype, like taking deep, calming breaths, like to the point of where they're, they're kind of getting to a point of hyperventilating at this stage. And oh, um, you gotta chill. Uh -oh. Like, do you do yoga down here or anything like that? <laughs> it's, it's great for that kind of stuff. No, I pedal bike. The pedal bike gives me all of the energy burning I need. No, I, you know, you know where. Starchy's basement is. If I get you out, if I let you out, I let you in because I thought you could stay and you could be with me. But if you go out, you could bring other people here. I don't want other people here. I no, want just you, you here. You understand? We can't be in big groups. It's bad. Well, why? What about big groups? We've heard rumors. Rumors that big groups don't stand near as good of a chance as smaller ones. Mm. Oh. And we want to give you the best opportunity to survive. That doesn't make sense. You're making that up. You're telling Starchy no, lies. No, 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 no. Starchy. And I'll, I'll just gingerly lay my, yeah, my, there, my there, hand. Okay. There are things out there. Let's do one of these because cool. now, cool. now, we're, now we're getting into touchy zones on Starchy. <laughs> so. Uh-oh. Uh Starchy's got boundaries we don't know about. All right. Ay -ay -ay. So you get, you get, I get one. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do get a success here. Let me, what are we, uh, and then we have 
eight, so I only get one. Okay, no. You um, can kind of narratively take control of the situation and how you, the this touch is actually uh, helping calm down at least to the point where they're not yelling anymore at it. Sure, so. I'll just I'll just I'll just kind of uh, get into a rhythmic yeah. rapport with Starchy and just be like, listen, Starchy, what Maria is trying to say, what we're all trying to say here is that we all have our own logs. You have your log here that you are keeping, uh-huh. and we have our log that yeah. we need to finish. Yeah, yeah. And that destination isn't here. Oh. That destination's out there, and we have to go oh. fulfill the log. You know how it is. I don't like that, though. I want, I've i been, see how long I've been down here. I finally made a decision to let somebody in here. And Starchy, we, we appreciate that. We really, really do. But how cool is it that, that we're in each other's logs? That is pretty cool. I, I ask, can I ask Starchy? Oh, Starchy's here. So. Do you believe in God? It's kind of. She's a real dumb one, isn't she? Uh, Doesn't know about power oh. and computers, and now is going on about God. Uh, she's just different, um, Starchy. You know what? You can go. You can, <laughs> you, you can go. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. <gasps> I step off the bike, and I'm saying, well... If you're sure, I send you, and I try to, I kind of like put my hands out, and I'm trying to send you positive energy, Uh, but I don't know, I mean, if you don't like religious people, they're all kind of religious. That, you didn't mean, really? Yeah? No? Yeah? I don't know. No, I you're go. not. You want to stay down here, friend? I wouldn't go that far. I don't want to stay down here. But you don't want to stay down here? Bird. Well, we have we, our own. Yeah, we need, our, we need to, we need to give them some time to rest. Um, I, I'm fine. I can go anytime. No, you need to st- Your facilities. So kind of as you're kind of talking, Starchy kind of goes up and kind of climbs up the peg to where the ladder is and just kind of like takes the big wheel and just kind of like clips it to a certain place and you watch as like start you kind of like reaches into one of the pockets that they have inside of their coat and they kind of like it looks like a little um uh like an allen wrench almost mm-hmm. and they mm-hmm. just start twisting it and turning it turning uh, it oh no starchy, i need to stop that. what are you what are you, yeah, what are yeah, you doing I'm here gonna, starchy what, what's I'm going on okay. here grab, 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 grab bitch is locking us <laughs> inside <laughs> I thought you thought I could go. <laughs> uh, so that's go. all right. Two successes, one failure. Okay, you know. No. Um, so so she she like is actually trying. Uh, to, so they're like, they're clearly taking the wheel off. Stri- like strip the strip not the bolts, s- not or? stripping. You can kind of see that they're kind of just taking it to to to. I mean, for all you know, it could be they could be stripping the bolts, right. coming out on it. But it looks like they just jammed an Allen wrench and are kind of like taking the turn wheel off at the moment when you get to Starchy's foot. Okay. And um, I uh, you you have narrative control. Okay, in so um, all I see is da- like some version of uh, making the hatch. Uh, not work and yeah. and so I I um yeah for our safety I, I grab I grab her legs and and just pull her pull. on top of me. Okay, so as you um, pull Starchy's legs kind of in front of you, you kind of like you you grab the legs and pull forward. Starchy's um feet falling back from underneath them kind of comes out underneath and you hear a wham Oof. as like a large a large like ting like bone on metal as Starchy basically hits their jaw on the f- on the first rung of the ladder as it just oh. comes and you watch as like their head just flies back and you both tumble backwards like straight into the splashed water that's right below you oh and um, Maria it's okay it's okay i had to do this starchy you do not get to tell us what we can and can't do starchy's out cold and so there <laughs> I think that's our welcome. I think it's time to go. Uh, we can't. I'll be fine. It's it's okay. This it's gonna be fine. Let's get out of here. Uh, let's get food. Let's get whatever we need. Let's get. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Do we want to take things yes. from here, or is that bad? No, take karma. take it. No, no, no. And no, take take whatever you need. Um, yeah. On, on our start way out. Start filling bags. Yeah. yeah. Start yeah. filling. Okay. If we've got a rucksack, Anything we can carry. We have food and medical supplies, okay. especially. Let's um make that for Maria. Let's see how much you grab okay. and take. Let's see how long Starchy's out. 
Okay, one success, one failure. All right, so you start grabbing as much as you possibly can and just stuff it with everything you can get. Um, uh, food, what else? Are there Medical torches? supplies. No torches. Or Sophie doesn't need torches. So. Are there? Uh, there would probably be lights. one hand light, like kind of one of those bulky D battery okay. flashlights. Okay. okay. And um, they're all set up with a sling? Yeah, you're all set okay, up with set a sling. Up. Okay. Um, yeah, great. Water? Yeah. Fresh bandages. Great. Awesome. So you batteries. you grab. <laughs> uh, but but before we leave, I want to make sure that Starchy is like not going to drown in the water as oh. it's rising. So I'll, I'll lay her. Yeah. I, now that you're grabbing a hold of them, you can. It's a her it's for a her. sure. Okay. Like now that you're feeling, it's it's even though I said they didn't look malnutrition, like she's definitely like we're talking like. Stick Ray thin, thin, like wave oh fish. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, as you kind of lay them down onto onto the bed. Yeah, yeah. And um, and you can hear her start to kind of like mumble. Let's go. Let's, Let's get go. out of here. Yeah. No, start. Thanks for it. Baby. Can we? Can I glance at the at the log before we leave? <laughs> Same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you kind of Master glance at the log, you go and see that Starchy has been doing, like has written about the moon and has typed in, and you can see that they've been doing some calculations um, and some string of math, but the last, last thing that you see before it comes in is eight days until impact. And you walk up the well, stairs. What's the point? Okay. I crack open a bottle of whiskey. No, <laughs> no, no, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I don't want to die with her. So you uh, start climbing up the stairs, and you, you know. Are you doing all right? Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I One great. handed. Yeah, I bet you do. Great. One yeah. handed. You kind of have to trooper. You kind of have to be underneath yeah. them okay. to kind of give I them the support. boost. Support. Corn's yeah. legs again. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing great. This is. What an adventure. Well, I really wish that yeah. Cora could be here for this. Mm. Me too, honey. Aww. While they're helping uh, Corinne out, I'll just quickly type on the log, thanks for everything. Sorry about the bump. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Hot um, hat, that, Thomas. And you, uh, and you, and you <laughs> shut the hatch. Um, it doesn't seal because you can't seal it from the outside. Um, but you oh. kind of lay the hatch down. And uh, what do you do now? You gotta get really far away from this place. Yeah. Let's I cover go. the hatch with some brambles to give it some protection. Cool. And then we didn't. I agree. We still haven't rested, though. No, no, no. no. We, we should rest from away from this place. hatch, though. Yeah. Let's so light you, up this flashlight and start get away walking? from the bramble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you begin walking. And you begin walking. Um, um, what are the monoliths? Like, when you say the monoliths have risen, like, what are we. Are they, how viewable are they? You can or? see them. I mean, in this just intense moonlight that you're dealing with right now, uh, I mean, you're you're basically looking at what is like, you know, a full moon times 10, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so these monoliths that are in front and around you, you can see one on every horizon, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, some are obviously much closer than others. At this point, you are, pretty far away from any one particular monolith that you can look at in any particular direction. Okay. But they're they're obviously massive if they're if they're viewable from the horizon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um also I neglected to give you one last thing that was inside of Starchy's basement. And this is your this is your tell from the last game. Um but uh I'm finding the best way to give it to you. There was a list. It was a special list that was taped and laid out literally along the side of Starchy's monitor. Mm. And it had very specific things that was laid out onto it. These things are true. They are afraid of the light. They swim through the earth. There is a light in the monolith. Don't go into the light. Okay, right. so let's stay the heck away from those Monolith? if we can. But they're afraid of the light, right? We got this bad boy. 
So as you walk, you enjoy making as much distance from where Starchy's basement was to where you want to be. And it is along an arduous walk. Every once in a while, you hope that maybe you could find some place to settle down and sleep in. Or, or like trees, like an oak tree with, with branches that could hold people. Yeah, yeah. And you can, you know, there are a couple places where that might work, but just it's so ruinous, the area around. It just seems like no matter what, there's not any flat dirt. It just seems like the earth had been churned and tumbled everywhere you go and it's just been lifted and torn about so trees have fallen buildings have been completely destroyed there is an occasional rare building that still seems to be standing which you could theoretically go and investigate if you wanted to go inside and find some place to sleep let's check it out you know <laughs> you are in vineyard territory ish so you might occasionally find like a you know an estate that still has some structural stability to it bottle of wine and some, yeah yeah in that let's, case okay great let's see if you can uh here's brenda rage now virginia <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen you roll anything why don't you look for an estate oh yes yeah. lucky roll lucky roll okay. virginia looking around Come on, virginia and we um, almost, at, we almost, but we don't. So no successes? No successes. And no ones. And no ones. So <laughs> I look very, very hard. Wait, that's a fail? That means that that's, we're on That's straight up. Round. Oh, that's, yes. no fails and no sixes mean we, we blow out another candle. Yep, and the scene ends. So we'll basically end the scene with you Sorry. walking in through the darkness, attempting to find some kind of sanctuary in which to rest your weary bones, which is going on. Four oh. days now, at this okay. point. No rest. So, we have seven candles to now work with, seven dice, and also seven truths of which to speak of. The first truth is the world is dark. Next is Virginia. What's the first truth of this story? The food is half gone. Maria? Um, because of the moon, there is now a bog-like fog covering... Everything. Yeah, six, yeah, six eight, ten oh. feet tall. Cool, 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 cool. Warren. They are closer than we think. The fog is caustic. Thankfully, we have plenty of healthy batteries for this flashlight. Mm. Six. And we can make, we could just make things that we see. What would you like to be a truth of this story? I would like to see a bridge. So you come across a bridge. Come across a bridge. Um, it was, yeah, you're the okay, one. last one. Okay, the, the things, they who have been swimming in the earth uh, are, are are closer than we think. In fact, um, we have seen the back of one surface as... Yep, sounds good. Okay. So, we will pick up this scene as a very acrid and dense fog now swells upon you as you kind of step in. And it's not so much <laughs> as you walk into it as it just kind of <laughs> almost as if like a bad guy was coming into the room it's just whoosh, kind of whoops around and it's not so much that you can't breathe it's just it just um 
it's not like putting hydrochloric acid on your skin or anything, but it does tingle. It mm. does feel. Like the way that cold, or, or like when it's cold outside and you try to go running and it, it yeah. just affects you a little. Yeah, it just gets you a little bit. And it just is, it just is not comfortable. It's nothing deadly by any stretch, but it is uncomfortable. And as you begin walking through the fog, you come across what appears to be a lone, um, you know, eastern countryside bridge. At this point, for what little you've seen, you can assume at this point you've probably been walking through, like, farmland, vineyards mm-hmm. at this point, like rolling hills on the inner city or the, the, you know, the, the outer countryside of where you are, and that's why it's been so hard to see really anything. Um, and the moon is making this fog so bright it's almost like if you chucked high beams straight into oh, something and it just is yeah. so opaque Oof. to the point of where you can barely see a few feet in front of you. Um, I want to try and, and because I think the morphine is starting to wear off yeah. quite a, quite quite a lot. Bit. I'm in a bit of pain. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to um, sort of see if I can, if I can tell if like there's any water running beneath the bridge. Right, 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 right. You kind of go towards where the bridge is and you listen more than anything just to hear if you can hear a trickling. And there is a, a small kind of piddle of what appears to be a light creek that just is running through this, you know, to be fair, not very steep little dip leading towards where the bridge is. Thank no, you. yeah could maybe try and sleep under this or rest. It's probably the best thing we found so under far. the bridge. Maybe when we saw something. when we saw the monsters come from the earth. And they they almost like if we were to see a whale that would, you know, lift its tail before diving deeper. That's kind of what you saw was basically oh. a crest of something come up before it just dived back deeper. I feel like we're safer on the bridge. Yeah, maybe in the middle. In the middle of the bridge. Okay. All right. Just for so. a moment, just really wanted something soft. Sorry, I wasn't thinking clearly. It's okay. Mm. So you go to the center of the bridge, and it's an open bridge, you know, not one of like a covered bridge or anything. So it's not really affording a whole lot of protection from the elements, but you do feel a sense of safety as you lay down and kind of enjoy a small amount of food, which is hard to eat simply because of just how irritating the fog is Mm. around you. It's just, it's, it's abrasive and you want to enjoy the food, but it's just so uncomfortable. The pain is starting to come on in full now. Uh, but you take the a moderate amount of coverings, blankets, you know, aluminum blankets that you have, and you try to find some sleep on the middle of this wooden bridge. I don't think I can sleep. No, so you stay up? Yeah, yeah. I'm just too, too painful to sleep. So I'm kind of just propped up on the, on okay. the bridge. You want to lean against my back? No, it's it's okay. I can, I, the, the bridge will help keep me awake. So as you lean on the bridge, you three manage to catch an hour, maybe an hour and a half of real rest. Just unconsciousness takes you, just the adrenaline of the situation just Mm -hmm. led to straight, just hitting it hard. And you are, and Corin, you're sitting kind of watching and you can't see much with the fog being as opaque as it is, and you being awake, what is going through your mind right now? Um, I'm thinking about my sister, and uh, I'm, I'm replaying the last moments that I, I spoke to her, mm. because we came on this trip together, but we weren't together when the monoliths came Rose. out of the ground, mm. and... I was on the phone with her, and then the phone went dead, and 
I've been doing everything I can to try and contact her, like find her, trying desperately to get to where I think she might have been. And then that's when I was intercepted by this group of people. And Where were they when you last talked to them? Um, so she, she was in the same city as I was, but she was um, still back at our hotel room. Hmm. And I had gone out to grab us some breakfast. Got it. So you were on the cell phone. That's yeah. what you were before it cut out. Right. And I went back to the hotel room and she wasn't there. Got it. All right. Well, as you're mulling through these last vital moments of precious connection between you and your sister, replaying this moment in your head over and over, over again, as it is something to do when you have to hold on to either two things, the present or the past, and you've chosen the past to latch on to. And this is clouding your mind as well as the pain. So it doesn't really strike you what happened until you basically hear the rumbling and the displacement of earth as you hear and you don't see because of the opaque fog, but just earth just flown up out of nowhere, just column after column, and you actually hear small screeches. Everybody, it's time to wake up. And everyone wakes up, not just from Corin's cries, but also from the screeches of these things that are just. We have to run. What is it? They're here. And you hear as basically just this terrifying sound as something, just anything. And uh, if you get up and start, are you staying on the bridge or are you running off? No, we're I'm running. Get up. We're yeah, run. we're running. Yeah. As you run and you kept just going off the bridge, you continue to see as more just columns of dirt just, <laughs> just lift up. And every once in a while you will pass and you'll see a shadow inside of this opaque fog, just something, a long, articulated, almost segmented thing that just is scuttling, and it is long, and like if you were watching a centipede, but you know, a centipede the size of a minivan that just is lifting up, and it just seems to be scuttling everywhere. And as you're running, you are trying to watch as each one of these creatures just seem to be moving around you, and you almost run into the back of one as one of them kind of whips and attempts to slap Maria inadvertently to the ground with the back of its uh, body. Okay, I have, I have two successes and one failure. Right, tell me how you avoid this uh, imminent slap. Um, well, I think I'm running with my arms out. Yeah, um, and, yeah. And and I think I, I also think that because of their movement, they adjust the fog or the yes. fogginess with their bodies. So there's there's this sense of uh, blowing air as like coming Something's towards coming me. Something's coming towards you. And, and I just kind of, I kind of do a, a baseball slide and yeah. duck and it just misses me. You just kind of watch as, as spines just and you can't tell just exactly if they're sharp or if they're collagenous or anything like that but you just watch as like spines just kind of like flick by your face for a moment as you see like forearm sized legs just kind of just go right by you as mm. it skittles off are they after us or are they they're not they're not affected by us at all the attack yeah okay particular just random they just seem they seem more startled than anything else. Should we stand still or keep running? Um, stand still, I think. Okay, so you all. As long all... as we stay together, it's gonna be okay. Okay, so you all stop. Yeah. Yeah. Where you are. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of continue to see, you know, the occasional flits of movement and even after a while, another column just <laughs> erupts again as you watch this time, the full length of this thing. And have you ever seen like a magician like pull the endless amount of tissue out mm -hmm. of their sleeve? Like just imagine that, but with the centipede creature just unfolding out of the dirt just over and over again. And eventually you see as it comes out and it starts skittling off and away. The hell? The, earth, the moon didn't cause that. No. No, that's much worse. What do we do about it? I... <laughs> what do you do about it? There's nothing we have that can possibly kill one of those things. I think we just have to stick together. 
And that's when the ground begins to shake. Stay or run, stay or run. Do we recognize that, that rumbling? This is a familiar rumbling more than it is familiar in the sense that if you've ever been in the beginnings of an earthquake, you would start to first feel the nausea in your stomach as you feel like your body is slowly being displaced and moving around. The only thing I know about earthquakes is, is well, very few people get hurt when trying to change locations. That's when they mostly I, get hurt. I grab Virginia and Corrin's hands. Okay. And you stay and you stand we still. Crouch stand. Down. Make sure, as sure, as sure, sure. Where, where are we? Where, are we still on the bridge, or are we no, now? You've off? run far we're, from the bridge at this stage. And are there um, trees or anything that can fall on us around us? The thickness of the fog around you. Yeah. You don't see anything in the immediate okay. vicinity. Certainly not within the two arms reach that you could reach through to see through the fog. We just need to make ourselves as small as possible. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Good plan. So you all huddle together in a small group as you get as close to the ground as possible and you feel the tremors which were now moving and since you're so close to the dirt you can see a little bit of things kind mm -hmm. of swapping around and coming mm -hmm. in and in the back in just the back of your consciousness you can still hear the faraway screeches of whatever these things were that were they just start snapping one two three and you just start to feel as that small tremor now becomes a bigger jumble, as now you have to stay close, because if you were standing, you would have absolutely have fallen at this mm. point. And you can hear cracking, <coughs> as just grating on earth, on earth, just <coughs> And it just seems to be, and you can actually even feel the snapping of just the area around you coming across you and even for a moment you start to see the ground beneath you begin to spider web and split at your feet it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay and it's gonna be okay five, it's gonna be six, okay seven eight i start to pray for now tell me just for a moment i know you're counting but reality check me here for a moment does that help with magnitude or is that just something you're doing to help yourself it's just to help me stay okay so. all right so you continue to count through, and 30 seconds pass, 45 seconds pass, and the shaking is still the same level of which you felt it, and at some point you actually I feel the up. ground adjust, and at that I moment throw you throw up. up. <laughs> it just, just shifts suddenly as if you just dropped like a foot and a half, like if you were in an airplane and you suddenly reached turbulence and you just dropped for a moment and you just feel that stomach lurch as you all fall briefly down into the ground. And about a minute before, a minute after the whole shaking had started, it stops and the rumbling ceases. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Let it out, get it out of there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, that was... Something. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, fuck. Don't apologize. Yeah, don't apologize. I just wasted all of that food. Um, better, <sighs> better, better to feel, to feel better. We've got it. Um, can we do a quick search around to see like what is still ground around yeah. us? Yeah. If you and, all. And is is the fog any version of clear, or is like what's the fog situation? An earthquake like that, how much would it displace the fog? It is less opaque, you know, okay. at this point. Right. It seems as it just basically it shifted and the air pressure has, has basically pushed and displaced this enough to where it's not nearly the density you have. In fact, you can see a lot farther than you could have previously after kind of sitting up. And now that you can see farther, you definitely see that the whole like the fact that you're in this big open field not far from where mm. the bridge is is probably pretty fortuitous mm -hmm. because as you look around you can actually see jagged spires of rock that have now lifted directly up from where they were previously but as far as what you can tell minus these jagged spires you don't see a whole lot more around you are we in a hole or 
That is true. So you, because of the displacement, as you look around, you do see that you have sunk at least two feet into the earth, at okay. least. Okay. And the area that was above you is is definitely to a point where you would have to boost yourself up in order to crawl over. Okay. So right now we're in a tiny bit of a hole or like a shielding crater. then? Yeah, it's this tiny okay. crater. Yeah. But we're in the ground. You're in the ground, yes. Make a break for it or rest here? This is actually a decent resting position. You want to just go back to sleep? You know, it just gets worse and worse as we keep going, so we might as well rest. I know I know that Corin didn't get any sleep. That's what I'm concerned about. So we might I'm just... I'm fine. I'm, I'm really... I'm okay. If we're all going to survive this, we've got to keep in mind that we're... Friggin' human. Yeah. And and our bodies do need rest. And right now it looks like we're in a field. An open field. That's perhaps the worst has passed. Let's hope. The, the good news is those those monsters, those enormous insectoids, weren't attacking us. Yeah. yeah. Nice, were... nice dodge, by the way. Thanks. Um, so if you guys all sit to rest... And mm -hmm. that's what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. yeah. You curl back up into. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, cocoon, uh, Corin, yeah. to maybe help. And um, cocoon just to kind of keep because I'm assuming help. when you got up and ran, those blankets that you had, long gone back on the bridge. At yeah, this point. I probably didn't Take grab any one. Supplies. Okay. Oh yeah. <coughs> so you. It's also good news, too, since you have moved down a little bit. The fog is not nearly, because it has settled above, okay. does not kind of come into the place of which you are for a moment. So, mm. yeah, you curl up and you find blissful, restful sleep. Great. Oh, sweet. This is great. Nice. Does Corin finally sleep? Corin, do you finally sleep? Sleep is a stretch. <sighs> okay. Um, it's fitful. It is a semblance of rest. Yeah, it's a hat. It's, it's definitely not sleep sleep. It's a painful rest. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you have a wonderful, blissful eight hours of sleep. Eight hours, four hours, six hours. It's hard to tell. It's enough, though, that you've all definitely fallen into a deep sleep. And Thomas, you are the first one to wake up. You get up. And you can see the, th the three companions are around you are still in some kind of state of either restful and fitful or otherwise peaceful sleep using whatever they have around you to kind of cushion into it. And the fog is not nearly as caustic as what it was earlier, or maybe you're just used to it at this point. But uh, what's going on in your mind as you kind of wake up in this wonderland? Well, I just finished up a dream about my wife mm. and I look amongst my companions and just kind of let the first moment of peace yeah. rush over me. You don't wish that you were somewhere else in that dream, that lovely dream about your wife, where you were. Oh, of course. I wish I was in a nice warm bed and her next to me. Right. But you do find some peace just seeing where you are, knowing that it has been madness leading up to this point. Yeah, I'll take it where I can get it. Mm. Well, you meditate upon that peace as you kind of look down and you hear something behind you small sound just I, I turn to see what it is you look behind you and you can see a long curving creature is mm. coming down slowly the crater hey 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 everybody <laughs> just tap tap shoulders kind of tap shoulders and this thing is 
you wake up and you see this thing is slowly kind of moving. And now that you've both awoken, you see it rear up and you watch his two almost like prey mantis like scythes just come right up. No. Oh, geez. And you watch as it just goes straight for you, Virginia. It, are these um, the same creatures? Are these the centipedes that weren't attacking earlier? Or are these, or do they look like different creatures? They look very much like the creatures that were scuttling around trying to escape earlier, but now have come back. Um, can I, am I? You're avoiding. Avoiding it, or am getting, I reaching for a flashlight? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see how the roll goes. God. Right now it's don't die, we'll see. Come on, Virginia. Oh, look. Oh, no. <laughs> one, one, no successes. We're going to sacrifice successes. my compassion. All right. My compassionate virtue. Um, um, and I can re-roll this. Re-roll, re-roll that one. Oh. So this has to be a six or else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or the conflict. Pretty good silver. odds. Oh, no. Is it a two? So I do need to hear an act of compassion as still part of this failure okay. from what it is. It... Um, I... So the scythe arm is coming at me? Yes. So I can't move. I can't move enough out of the way, but as I roll, I roll, yeah. but instead of hitting me straight on, it hits my side right. and still hits me, but I push sleeping Corrin out right. of the way further from the other scythe, because I think there's two. Was it safe to say that maybe the scythe was more going towards Corrin yeah. than it was you, and you had yeah. to push them out of the way yeah. in order to get into it? And I'm going to, I'm going to do you a favor, Virginia. Um, I think this thing goes actually through your shoulder okay. as you watch as this barbed, this whatever this mantis kind of appendages just just exit out through your body as you start to feel your warm blood start to cover your top and that will end our scene we are now at six candles mm -hmm. six dice and six truths First, the world is dark. But, Virginia, you have the first truth. Uh, we escape from the attack. From the creature. From the creature. Okay. All right. Next truth. Next truth. Um, uh, we... Uh, the monoliths are clearly... The monoliths have summoned them. Yeah. And we also feel a slight pull. Great. Um, the creature managed to tear away the last of our supplies. Great. Three. Um, that summoning, that feeling that you have when the monoliths are close becomes louder and stronger the closer you get to it. The flashlight was successful in staving off whatever that thing was that attacked us. Right. And you get the final one. Virginia. Mm. We're making our way to a building ahead, which looks like a dilapidated church. A dilapidated church. All right. <clears throat> so we pick up our scene, six candles in, as you are all hunching, some bleeding, injured, as you're kind of running from these creatures who, um, Thomas, you just occasionally just swing the light back and you'll sometimes occasionally hear a screech <laughs> but more often than not you seem to be making pace whatever is behind you is not aggressively following you but 
No matter where you are, you can hear, and since the fog has dissipated more in this travel, you can see them scuttling what appears to be everywhere. Like, not a minute goes by before you see at least one of them at some distance somewhere that appears to be moving around, as if they're just wandering aimlessly amongst the countryside. Do you make it to this old church in front of you? I wonder what stirred him up so bad. Let's head for that church. We just got to get out of out of the open and, and maybe up somewhere high. Yeah, someplace we can get some safety. How, how, what are we going to do about Virginia, though? Um, you have to stay alive. You're losing far too much blood. Do we have any bandages left? The backpack got ripped off when we got attacked. What? But I, I think... I think maybe we could maybe take off some of my bandages and, and use them for her. I only need a, a little bit to keep the split, split on. I don't mind sharing. Is that what you like to do? Yeah. Mm. So you start unwrapping the little bit of bandage that is covering your arm. And before it gets to where your actual break is, you rip off a piece and you hand her... <laughs> part of what your bandage is. But if we're in the church, I mean... They might have something. Yeah, they might have, like... Yeah. We could at least yeah. use Let's the yeah. Bibles in the... In Bible the, pages, Bible something. pages, or, uh, priest robes, pastor robes, whatever. Find some supplies. I'm really good at this. Uh, mm. No successes. One, one. Oh, I burn this, because I'm stubborn. Stubborn. I'm stubborn, and I will not take no for an answer. Right. That there is not something helpful. Go. In, in feverishly start just ripping through this place, just knocking things off of shelves. Oh, yeah. Ripping this is, things out. Yes, highly, highly immoral, destroying probably sacred tapestries and stuff. I, I, I look, I watch you, and I think maybe she shouldn't destroy the sacred tapestries, and then I think, no, I have blood. I have definitely, blood. yeah, like, I'm definitely, like, ripping Bible pages to see how, how like, the soakability of them, like, yeah. squeezing it like Charmin, baby. Yeah, just... Nope. All right. Well, that was quick. Um, wow. As you pour... All I was doing was searching for some... <laughs> No, it's not. It's not you. It's not me. It's just the dice. It's just the dice. Why you do this? Why are you doing this? Uh, as you pour through this place and uh, just tear it apart with every gumption of stubbornness that you have upon you, your mind is racing. You're grabbing pieces of parchment you're just holding on to bibles looking at it, just crumpling them everything is so waterlogged from either the fog at this point or it's just been raided and it's terrible and you are just pouring through this place and you kick back into where the pastor's office is and you see eight bodies piled on top of each other laid out just in a pyramid right in front of you just stacked and they've been wrapped in all of the material that you would have used to help treat her wound sheets robes all of the cloth that you would have done but they are meticulously laid out stacked like kindling in front of you and That ends our scene. Let's uh, go to five dice. And let's establish some truths. Maria, you do get to start with the first truth. First of all, the world is dark. The world is dark. Um, the human who did this is the pastor of the church. And he, for... You can just leave it there. You can just leave it with the pastor of the church unless there's more. If, is there something really important you want to add on to that? I mean, yeah. He's uh, he's hovering in midair. Uh, 
Is the pastor still in the church? Yeah, he's but he's he's hovering. He's like, he is alive. Floating. Okay, he's. Or alive. is he alive or is he dead? He's alive. He's he's alive. He's alive. Yeah. So the pastor is alive. So there's there's a there's a few things here we can do this because you have an opportunity for the other players to be able to establish truce with this and lay off it as well okay. too. We can say, and this can be a truth: the pastor is alive and he did this. Pastor is alive and he did this. How's that feel? Cool. That's good. Cool, cool. Um, uh, if we stay here, we'll die. Um, the pastor wants to appease them. The fog rolls in and becomes even thicker. I call to the pastor, Father. Is this a truth? Yes. You have one last truth. truth. This is the truth. This you, is my truth. You just call to him, Father. Right. Oh. I mean, I'm bleeding and there's nothing, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, you're bleeding? Yes, well, of course. Well, because I have my shoulder. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you are. I mean, like, I'm kind of like. Yeah. No, I get it. I'm, I just, uh, if you don't mind me saying, that okay. sounds like something you could do in game to call out to him. Oh. Unless there's, uh, you have an opportunity to give a truth in this, if you wish. Mm. So, okay, hold on. Let me take it. For Can good or it? ill. Okay. Yes. Mm. There's a late. Behind the church. All right. There's a lake behind the church. All right. We start our scene now with five dice, five candles, and five truths established. Maria, as you are just, again, having stumbled upon this seen in front of you. You are doing it purely for the sense of just, you cannot let her bleed out. You needed to find something in order to help her. And stumbling into this room, there is a shock and there is something that is bugging you before you even notice the pastor is there and alive. What is it? Um... There, uh, they n none of them have uh, wounds on them. None of them. None of the rags are bloody. None of the rags are bloody. They're just wrapped. Okay, great. So you stumble in and you kind of come into this place, and you can see that the pastor is actually was sleeping on a cot as you burst into this room and you watch as he just kind of sits up. I, I'm sorry, actually, you established in your truth. You said that he was hanging, right? Well, uh, I, I overstepped my bounds. That's but right. That's right. You didn't, we didn't I did. Adjust. I, I had him hovering uh, like, like a... Like a supernatural creature. Yeah, yes. but, but right then we changed it to he's just alive and he definitely... Yes. Stacked the people and, and wrapped them up. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So you kind of er, watch as this pastor just sits up and just looks at you and goes, what? And, yeah. Who are you? And you kind of see as he gets up and he seems to grab something. Guys, we got to go. Guys. Sorry, Father. And he rushes straight towards you and goes... And just kind of uh, uh, automatically motions like, get out, get out of here. Okay, 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 we're gone. Let's go. He kind Let's of go. runs towards you and uh, kind of, and mm, yeah. Backing up, yeah. like immediately towards the, yeah. the entrance of the church, like right. trying to make put as much distance between myself and, and the pastor as possible. All right, you, you, at least you three are all like making your way out from where the church is as you see this angry pastor who's in a nightgown at this point, not even in his frock coat, but just in his nightgown coming up. He seems to be holding some kind of rag in his hand. He's holding a rag? Yeah. Uh, I, I say, hello, Father. My dad's a pastor, too. 
Virginia, not now, what Virginia. What are you doing? I'm a little lightheaded as well because I don't have much blood. Like, there's a little. All of you. Ow, he this has is, a rag. Ah, this is a house of God. And don't you know, they are coming and it is time for them to accept. It's time for all of us to accept. How are you even alive? It doesn't matter. Get away from us. All right, he makes more steps towards you and he's kind of walking towards the one who isn't Maria, running what happened? Right what did you see? Uh, uh, stacks of bodies wrapped in rags. I pull out my scalpel from okay. my boot. Oh, okay, you pull it on. Oh, fine, fine, very well. Just leave this place. Leave this place immediately before they find you. Yeah, let's, Virginia, let's go. Who's they? Oh. The ones who are becoming the cleansing ones, the ones that we have to appease, the ones of the monolith, the true beacons of God. I don't know that we're of the same cloth or faith anymore, but I see you have a rag in your hand. And he takes a few steps closer towards you. No, I don't. I, 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 uh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely I, I put. put Ta-da! Okay, you want to do this? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Put your put that hand up and stop him as he's coming up. Hey. Awesome. All right. So um, this so is. So I mine. just interpose myself between. You kind of, if you don't mind me yeah. giving it to you a little bit. Actually, I, I could theoretically roll for narrative control on this, but I kind of imagine you doing him a little bit of like a body check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, with your like, good shoulder. My good shoulder, I just kind of like, like shove him out of the way and get right in between him and Virginia. <clears throat> and I just stare him down. Don't you see? Don't you realize we've all been chosen, the ones who haven't been taken directly from this earth. This planet is dying. This is the great calamity, and we are all a part of it. The only worm food I see here is you. Uh-huh. You're gonna let us go. Yeah, well, I don't seem to have the means of stopping you at the moment, and he keeps looking at that scalpel there. Just back away. Mm. Uh. Are you just, are you using the rag? Because my shoulder is bleeding, Father, and it, I think it would be. I stick out my hand. A benevolent. rag. Benevolent thing. Nothing funny. Uh, he kind of is gauging the odds right now, four against one at this moment. And he kind of lazily drops the cloth, turns around, and walks straight back into his office and slams the door. Fine. As you hold the cloth, Corin, you get close to it and you catch a woof of something. It's oh. strong. Uh, what is it? Do you think corn would, do you think? Probably, do I feel lightheaded when I? Yeah. Uh, that's chloroform. Oh. He was gonna try and knock us out with this. I can't let you, we can't, that's yeah. too can't, close yeah. to your, to where you breathe, but is we'll find a, another way. Maybe we can find some clean water, maybe wash it out. That, yeah, that would work. Okay. You start to hear shouting coming from the pastor's office at this point, loud prayers, some as if he is just shouting to the loud of his being and you can hear him. He's just making as much noise as possible, stomping on the earth, banging against the walls, calling out for his vessels to come and cleanse this land and take his offerings at this moment. Let's go so to the what, lake. We'll take it on the road, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's jump let's in go. the lake. <laughs> so you go around to the back and jump in the lake? Is I that think. what I heard? I, I'm, or, or we could keep going. We can at least rinse out at the At least, rag. yeah, yeah, r- yeah, rinse out the rag. Yeah. Right, so you dip the rag. I put the scalpel back in my boot. Boot, cool. So you dip that rag and you clean and, and wash it off as much as you possibly can and shove it back into whatever packages you still have left of supplies. At this Let stage, before we, mm, yeah, yeah, before we open. At this it. point, okay. you can but hear. You still have my the bandage that I lent you. Yeah, so. I still have the half of the thing. As you continue to run around, you can still hear the screaming and the wailing of this pastor. And at this point, you can absolutely see the scuttling movement of whatever these creatures are as they seem to be um, moving and at least circling to the point of where this building is. And in fact, one of them you actually see start to crawl up to the side of this church and you watch as it just 
it lifts its just body and just pries open one of the sides of the door, just looking at to it, and it just feels it's pulling with its little pincers, just pulling pieces of wood off, and it <laughs> screams inside of it. And then you watch as... <laughs> You watch as, as something is flung into the air and you see as this thing snatches and you watch it slip back out with a white body inside of its mouth as it kind of skittles out and starts moving. It's kind of crazy. Let's get out of here. Let's go. And I would like, at least at this point, because it's moving around. Oh, that's right, because one dice was gone. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you need. Um, if you want to get out of here, then you can go. Yeah, yeah. I right. use the flashlight to cover our. Oh, that's exit. right. You have that, so you kind of shine it as it kind of looks at you with its body. It's as it just like nope. just sucks it in a single movement. It just <laughs> screeches as it scuttles back away, and uh, you you go. You that's right, want. asshole. You know, keep going. All right, let's go. You run for a short time, ten. 15 minutes or so as you continue to get as much distance behind the church as you possibly can when Thomas, you're still in front, right? Mm -hmm. You start to feel as you run forward and out of nowhere, you feel your foot just fall just steep out of nothing. You just kind of, as almost like you missed a step while going down a long staircase and you just feel as your momentum just drops down for a moment. Roll. One six. So. The heck? One six. So sometimes, and I haven't been executing it as much as I should have, he's, this, the conflict succeeds. But you can sometimes, the GM can take narrative control by taking whatever dice has been taken away from the scene at this moment and then apply it, so. And I'm only doing this so that I can say, as your foot stumbles and you fall and you start to feel your body topple over, you feel Maria just grab you by the back of your collar and then just pull you back as hard as you can as you both tumble down onto the ground. A lot of people falling on you, this <laughs> circumstance. Bring it. Yeah. I look at Maria and I think, she's such a savior. She saved so many people. And look back to the church and I think, I'm really just heartened about that pastor and about church. Right. Mm. Makes sense. You all right there? Oops. Uh, maybe you better hold on to this for a second. I hand her the flashlight. Right. Virginia, as you kind of um, seeing that happen, you take a few steps forward to look at just exactly what occurred here, and you look mm. down and you can see that there is a crack, there is a crevasse that is just laid out in front of you in which the earth is split and it has caused a small chasm that is between where you are on your side and the other side. So How how wide? Well, wide enough that he would have fallen inside of it for sure. Is can we leap can across, we it? across it? Absolutely. Okay. Is there does there appear to be any way around uh you could go around for a while. Yeah, if you wanted to take the time. So we we can't see the ends of the crevasse from our from our per current perspective, it, it you can see the end of the crevasse. It is uh, a jumpable distance, but we are talking about five feet, six feet at this moment as well, too. So it's a running mm. leap distance, oh. not so much a bunny hop across the crevasse kind of an attitude. But it, it appears to go horizontally from like, yes. as far as our eyes It I is can it see. is cutting a current. It is a current blockade in front of you. Mm. How do we feel about track and field? <laughs> Normally good. I think I'm running on a little low low fuel right now. Uh, but we can, I think you all should go for it first. And then I'll and leave, and bring leave up you the behind? rear. No, no, I'm still going to go for it too. Just but if there are more of us on that side, then if she, near, if she misses, we can maybe grab her. Okay, okay. I mean, you two can, I obviously. <laughs> Worth nothing yeah, No, right now. don't say that. I'll go first. Great. Right. I step back from the crevasse and run and jump. So, Thomas, as you steady yourself and you plant your feet in the dirt, you look back to the three people who are with you, and you 
dig your heels in and you run for all your worth. This is a deadly circumstance. What does that mean? Now. It means that if this fails, there is a good chance that he will die. Is that determined by cards or by you? That is determined by the dice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What game, you, what game do you think we were playing? I'll be fine. The game of life. Oh. One, one. Yeah. I'll take the hit and go first. That's very protective of you to try mm. this before everything else. So. Thomas. That's a fail. What the? So you run for all that you're worth. You come across and you jump and you sail through the air and for a moment it looks like you would have absolutely made it in fact had your foot not just kind of slipped on its original purchase you would have absolutely made it to the other side but that one foot tumble just instead of landing you on the other side flattens you against the side of the crevasse and from there we end our scene. We have four truths in which to establish here. What? I'm giving you an opportunity to be able to take this conflict and establish the first truth, Thomas. This is not an immediate death for you, but I'm not letting anybody take him off right now, mm. okay? So okay. I'm letting you have the first truth. I'm able to grab hold of the opposite side of the ledge, but my ankle is shattered. Shit. All right. God, y'all. Second truth. There's um, a crack going towards you from the other side that you can that you can grab hold of that leads straight to where you are. So there is a crack that is forming leading to where he is. But a, a grabable one, like a like something that you can use. Like a handhold. Yeah, a handhold. The creature has finished its meal and turns its attention to us. Right. Um There is a shadow looming over the moon. Okay. Great. We have four candles, four truths. The world is dark. Now we begin, Thomas. You are literally holding on with your nails at this point as you are grasping a hold of crumbling dirt with every ounce of strength you have. Your dattered, shattered foot is dangling underneath you at the moment as you keep one foot, and it is the one that's basically hanging on to a root mm. at this stage, and that is what you have purchased on. What do you do? Help, uh, someone help, please. Please help me. Oh, yeah. Uh, can I make it across? Or do you I have to actually roll for that? Absolutely make it Well, I would rather across. help him. Um, he's on the other side. He's on the other side. <sighs> so we can only help him if we make it across? Basically. Oh, I'll there's go. gotta be. Uh, I'll go. Okay, okay. Yeah, I got a little roll cold feet. I got a little cold feet there. I, I have a. Um, as you all kind of stare at each other, wondering what do we do as he is crying, help, help, Virginia, speaking out from nothing, says. My, oh, what do I say? Oh, I just, I heard you say I'll go. Oh yeah, I'll go. My reckless nature hits over. Sure, I'm bleeding here, but I think I've got better odds because I believe 
I'm going to make it. And if I don't, at least the two healthy people will be left. All right. <laughs> to help him. Okay. Ah! I'm really good at this. <laughs> good One success, good job, good job. no failures. Nice. Oh, God. You <laughs> against all odds. Right. You run, Virginia, and tell me how you get across. Uh, well, I use the weight of my not great shoulder, and I I kind of leave running with it, and then I force the other one forward really hard, and I leap, slam, get there. Yeah. And can I? You grab his hand. You slam on the other side. I'd like to feel like that when you get over there, you kind of get hit in the midsection as you oh, <laughs> kind of just lose a little bit of breath, but you use the one good shoulder to pull yourself up, up as you get over to the other side and you are able to grab Thomas's hand as you hold on to him. It is at that moment you start to feel the ground shaking. Oh, no. Oh, no. Again. Can I pull? Help. Oh, yeah, I have Can I pull? going to try and yeah. assist and pull up. Yeah. I pull him. I can pull him. You pull him yes. up from the top of his moment to where he is. You two on the other side of this crevasse. Corin and Maria on the other side as everything starts to shake again. Um, okay. We've got to jump. We have to. Okay. Yeah, we do we have to get to the other side of this crevasse because nothing is coming after Okay. Us. All right. You go first. Yep. Here we go. <sighs> yes. But two ones. Oh. Corin, oh. tell me how you get across. So I. That means she succeeds. She Sorry, succeeds. they succeed. Yes. Oh my god. So, but now we only have two dice to roll. <laughs> Oh, no. For the rest of this scene. Ooh, boy. <laughs> so Corin um, takes a cue from watching Virginia and uses the weight of their useless arm to kind of, like, propel them forward mm -hmm. and then, uh, like, pushes as hard as they can off the edge and reaches forward with their with their good hand, um, knowing that this is actually probably going to re-break their arm if they land wrong. Yeah. Um, and, like... And at this point, you land, but you have two arms waiting for you as they basically grasp a hold of you and lift you up as you feel your hips and your legs impact against the side of it for a moment, but you fall forward, and they're able to pick you up and lift you up. Maria, you are the last one on the other side of the crevasse, and you can hear the screeching behind you. You can hear the scuttling. Coming. All right, I flip around, shine my light to give me some yeah. at least <laughs> some time, some time before I can like back up and run forward and jump. I have to roll. Yes. Come on, I Maria. shout, just believe. You got this, Maria. You can do it. <sighs> can I burn? Is it a moment? Or yeah, is it's it, a moment. You cannot burn a moment. Oh, okay. Can 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 someone can else burn all... a moment? <laughs> burn something? No. Okay. It's a failure. Which means that this scene is over. Before I end this, I'd like to say, Maria, as you are running for all your worth, you feel for a moment as you run and leap. You feel the stinging pain in your foot for a moment as you look behind and see the pincer of one of these awful creatures that had come to stalk you just go whoosh right through your thigh, which made you lose all of the momentum that you had as you were coming into it. And you felt as your hands grasp and fall down. And while Thomas hit the side and was near the top and left his foot on the root, you reach out and grab for the root. We'll leave it there. So I don't know if I grabbed it or not. You get the first truth. Okay. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Good one. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, I so I can make the first truth that I do grab the root. Do you? Yeah. The first truth is you grab the root. I grab the root for sure. 
Um, the creatures are big enough that they can reach the other side of the crevasse very easily. That is truth. The earthquake is intensifying. And that's all we can have. Uh, that is the three truths that we speak as we go into this next scene with three dice. I will be very upfront with you now. Every check at this point is deadly. You are in a deadly, terrible circumstance. And everything at this point is... We are nearing the end. We have three candles left. Oh, it got me! It got me! I got you. I got you. I reach over the side and try to help her up. And, and you, I, yes. I'm gonna yeah. like brace, try to brace Thomas's legs so that he doesn't. I try to grab her other hand too. You grab a hold, and Thomas, you reach down. This is it. This is what you can do. This is your moment. You can take her. You can bring her back up. You can save her. You can do it. And as you feel the roots starting to slide, is it? Bits of bits of dirt are now mixing with the sweat of your hand. You have a chance to grasp a hold of him, but he has to reach for you. He has to grab you. Oh. One failure. I will eventually not relent. You were not dying today. <laughs> wow. Not today. Wow, that vengefulness. Yeah. Quite effective. And I just look into her eyes as I pull her wrist and just yank her out of the crevasse. You just pull her up with all of your strength. That's the shaking uh. and the crumbling of the earthquake begins to pull farther. Is the top mm -hmm. one your moment? Is that your hope? Yes. Okay. All right. As you are pulling, you feel her lift up as she just rolls onto this now shaking, pulling, it moving me in the eye. Thank you so much. Can you guys, can you run? I, I could try. I also can try. Just lean on me. I can still run, so I, I can help. I can, I, I will carry you all if I have to, but let's just go. Let's get out of here. Let's go. And I just try to hop. Yeah, I offer yeah. Him also as yeah, yeah, much right. support as I can. And I, I So the two walkers everyone. support the two non walkers. Yeah. yeah. There's two shattered legs and two shattered arms. Yeah. So Ugh. so they're leaning on our non yeah. hurt arms. Yeah. This is so We're doing great. This is so hard, everyone. This is so hard. The ground is moving underneath you violently. It's pulling apart as just this quake is already looking to be infinitely worse than the last one is. Oh. And you can hear the scuttling and the screeching as you watch as the creature has starting to move and give itself a bridge as it's coming over. But then out of nowhere, the area you just were, that part of land it was, just drops again. Again, just sink as it falls down, and you watch as the creature uh -huh. just grasps its little legs as it starts to skittle back up again, pulling itself back up for all that it's worth. And you all shift again as the earth begins to move and crack around you as you are now tumbling, just as just the ground is cracking around you. And you can feel the dirt start to move and the ground underneath you every once in a while, it will just press up right up against you, cracking against your shattered ankle as you scream in pain. <gasps> and you are moving while the earth is shaking and moving. One, and you two, run. Three, four. And you run for everything you're worth, you run. As you move forward, Virginia, you're losing blood. You've had this pressure placed against you, but your wound hasn't been treated the way that Corrin's is. There's a muddled uh, thought going through your mind. What is it? What are you feeling right now? I think if we've made it this far in the rapture, then we're probably going to make it. I think that there's a reason we've come this far and escaped all these things. So you think if you've made it this far, it's going to drop and you're going to be all right, mm -hmm. right? 
So you continue to run. These are the fleeting thoughts that are happening in your brain when suddenly a crack just opens up in front of you and you step a foot in as you lurch in front of you and this wistful-eyed thought of we're going to make it happens before the earth shifts again and it cracks and it splits your leg as you feel the bones crunch what? from underneath oh, you gosh. as the earth has basically grinded you like a small pedestal eh? underneath Virginia. you. Virginia! Uh, oh my God. Am I dead? No, no, you are not dead. No. Oh, but I wish it was, it was painful. But you mm. almost wish you were with what this is. And do hmm. we need you want to pull your leg free? Uh, yes, I would like to pull my leg free. Oh, well, we have three people uh, who can't walk. Great. Or uh, I, yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. trying to pull Virginia. Up all from, of you. Yeah, yeah. it's helping. You're all using the last good <laughs> yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We need more Force limbs, y'all. Virginia, roll three dice. Three dice. Um, I'm Come rolling on. to pull to get pulled my leg out. Just, of this just get talk. your leg out. Otherwise, oh. you're stuck. You can also obviously beyond the screaming talk to your people. Right now. Um, I just want to say thanks. Don't talk that way. I think yeah, we're meant is... to make it. I do. I do. I just. I believe. Mm -hmm. okay, 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 <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> oh. And that belief, you all with your all your able limbs and my all your good leg managed to pry out. So the moment happens in which as you're pulling, the earth shifts yet again as oh. you feel it crunch and move. Actually, I'm so sorry. This is technically your success. You get to do your narration. Mm. As you oh move. yeah, well. The earth crunches and moves, but we're so fortunate that it moves to release the leg again yeah. a little bit more apart. So and on top of your very strong lifting, we also <laughs> get a help <laughs> push from the earth. <laughs> like let's, let's like it lets go. Of my and leg. as you lift your leg up, you can oh. clearly see that it is shattered. Oh. You actually are looking down it, and there's compound fractures everywhere. You can actually see as pieces of bone are jutting at various parts All across right. your calf and you can't put yeah. shit any move. weight on okay. it. Can we are move? You, we have to we have to get out of the open or something. Do we hear do we still hear them? The screeching, it's being drowned now by just this breaking and moving of earth. Do we see As anything through the fog? The the Through the fog, you can see the earth kind of moving and crumbling in front of you, and you do see a small uh, bailey of trees that are kind of in front of you from where it is, but you can see they're just shaking and moving with just such ferocity as yeah, things are moving around. No. No. There no. was the lake that was behind you, but this field that you're in, you feel like you're maybe in, a, in an area where both the field is ending and maybe forest begins. And, you know, there could be something, but you, it, you don't, you're not here, not where you are now. Avoid, yeah. avoid, avoid the trees. We want to avoid the yeah, trees. Yeah, let's not until the shaking trees. stops. Yeah, right. Sure, sure. But okay. I, I think I think the only thing we can do right now is is try and keep as still as possible and 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 away from big things. Let's all yeah. Maybe there's some 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 roots of something that we can all like hold, hold on to. Hold on to, to something right. that's connected yeah. to the ground. Get close enough to the trees where yeah. they won't get like fall on us. But if there are any like roots sticking up that we can just sort of hold on to okay. or shelter together, under yeah. something yeah. like Great. that. Yes. So you begin to look around and you come and find that not getting into the trees, but being close enough since they are large trees with the earth being pulled apart, you do see a small tangle of root has kind of been pulled out and there's just one of them, enough to where you could probably have one person grab it and then all of you could be holding on to each other at one point or another yeah. and you grasp a hold of it and then that is when the ground shifts with you again as you feel the th ground that you are and start to slant as it pivots itself up, in fact, throwing, tumbling some of you up into the air ever so slightly as Earth begins to pull itself away mm. from where you are. The, f the floor falls out from underneath you as you drop yet again, holding on to the yeah. root, all three of you together, whoever is on the bottom, who is on the bottom? Uh, I'm not sure. Whoever of us would probably be the smallest, it's either you or me. 
probably me. Because my leg, I probably got there last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Virginia, and as you I have two functioning arms. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like, yeah. you hold on to this yeah. root for all it's worth. Yeah. And you're grasping this root. And Virginia, as you're kind of grasping a hold of it, the bottom of your feet can just barely touch the ground beneath you, just oh. as its tippy toe. Oh, I, I think I might stand on one leg here. Maybe if we drop. Maybe. What I, would you like to do? Uh, well, we can't climb out of here. We don't have a rope. We're stuck. Huh. The ground is always moving now. I say we is, we commit a little bit more to the roots and, and sure. And yeah. Try maybe try and pull ourselves up. Yeah. Can you climb up from the top? From the bottom up. Oh, yeah. I don't know. How's your shoulder? Can you? My shoulder is bleeding, but, but I could try it? my other arm. You want to power through it? Yeah, I can power through. So I'm climbing, you know, with everyone instead of having... You're climbing up them. Okay. You're using them as a human ladder as you're attempting to take your one arm and you grasp a hold of cloth and you pull yourself up with your one arm and your shattered leg using your knee for purchase whenever you can get it. Roll. Ooh. Two. Two. Yep. Oh, okay, we got this, I believe. Oh, oh, two one. Oh, well, good thing I can sacrifice my recklessness. Okay. Oh my god. So <clears throat> even as I feel as I'm about to slip and not make it, I say, "Go for it!" And I go, Rrr! and I keep trying with my one arm to just keep going. Slipped up. You're putting some real weight. In fact, you're making your friends more uncomfortable oh, just no. by lifting them up oh, as no. you're digging what little amount of strength you have into them and pressing your weight upon them. Oh, those, um, what is the moment? You can't sacrifice the moment. You can't sacrifice. Oh no, it's right where it right. Okay. Can I use mine? No, you cannot okay. use yours. With this, we end this scene. And Virginia, your recklessness as you just grasp and you pull and you hold on to each one as you're lifting yourself up, everything you can. You get up to the point of where you might be close to where Thomas is when all of a sudden you feel the arm that you've been using, that you've been powering through the pain through in order to place this in, you put your arm onto it, but it just goes limp oh. out of nowhere. And you feel yourself slip as you tumble, and you tumble down. And as you are falling through this crevasse, looking to your three friends in front of you, there is a moment, there's something you're thinking of. What is it? I don't know that I believe anymore. And that is the last fleeting thought you have before the back of your head hits a piece of stone and you three hear a loud crack. No. Virginia. Your body tumbles into the earth below. No. Steph, thank you <laughs> so much for playing. I appreciate it. I really do. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. I'm good. All right. My head hurts. Yes, your head probably does hurt. But thankfully, it's not you. It's a character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to have to ask you to leave my table. Okay. Okay. I, I, I try to send good vibes from my from beyond. deadness. Okay. So. Goodbye. The scene ends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have a whole lot of time left. We have two candles, two truths, and two dice left. Normally, Virginia would offer the first truth, but since she is not here, I will first begin by saying the world is dark. And then I will say that you all climbed out of the crevasse with effort to find stable ground. 
Thomas, you have the second one. It took everything that I had to climb out of the crevasse and scraping against the sides of the rock, just pulling and scraping. I make it out, but I am bloodied. You're bloodied. Got it. As you all find purchase, first Corin, Thomas, then Maria, you find yourself on this slanted piece of earth that has been bending towards the chasm in which Virginia has fallen down into. You find that the earth is still violently moving, not as abrasive or as intense as it was, but enough that you could not stand even if you tried at this point. Shattered leg notwithstanding. What do you do? Corn is kind of staring over the edge into the darkness. Like just completely stunned mm -hmm. and not sure what to do next. Right. Uh, uh. I think Hope just. I think it just ran out. No, don't say that. It can't. It can't. We can't let it. We have to find a way. They'll get us if we don't. What do we do? What she would have done. We have to believe we can get out of here. Lead the way. Do you feel that? You can hear it. And in fact, you are impressed at this moment just how loud the buzzing is it's taken over the cacophony of the earth moving even at this point and you can feel more than you can really see because the fog still obscuring the vision just the presence of the monoliths and even though the creatures aren't around because the earth is shaking so violently you can tell that they are all near there, somewhere around where you are, just listening. The monoliths might have the answers. What do you mean? Hey, I, I don't know, but they, they seem to know. If, hey, it's, hey, the worst that happens is death. That's the worst, and we've seen it. I don't know how much more I can take. We have a responsibility to write these things down. Somebody else might find us. Somebody else might know what That's to do. That's good. That's good. Um, but if we're here, we have the chance to find out what's going on. to the monolith? Yeah. All right. Let's keep going, guys. Thomas, as you are holding on to the people who still have good legs at this stage, you... <laughs> one good leg. One good leg. You are aggressively, and you are a battered, shattered group. You came from this. You walked miles. I, before we go, I want to yeah. like write our names on one of the trees. <laughs> with like a knife or with your scalpel? Yeah, with my scalpel. What do you write? Do you just put your names on there? I just put our names. Uh, I draw I draw a, a monolith below us. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, I draw, I draw four, four people holding hands. Mm. As you leave this effigy encased on this tree, you begin to hobble what you can, and it is more crawling than it is any kind of serious walking because the earth is still just making its movement. And at this point, you still occasionally feel the earth just adjust and shift around you as you just pull yourself up and you look towards what you feel where the monolith is and you i said this earlier but you 
traveled so far, miles, to make it past the tidal waves to get to here, knowing that um, the monoliths were maybe not something you wanted to get close to, but now you are here, and as you see the earth begin to break and pull, you lift yourself up a piece of broken incline as you come over to literally see as the monolith is above you and the earth is laid out in front of you and you can see almost as if someone took a scalpel and cut this land straight in half you see just black onyx rock going straight into the earth and you see a perfect cut of the earth's crust right in front of you just laid out in front and it is 50 60 feet high in front of you as this wide breath of expanse is laid out before you and it is you and this tree of which you've marked upon and you realize it as the fog dissipates around you you are on an island, an island of rock, the monolith in front of you, and this sheer rock laid out in front. And the tree, the tree that is there, there is what appears to be a craggy pathway that could lead back towards the area that you or once came from leading up. But it is a long climb indeed to get back up to the ground level. Is there a way to get closer to the monolith? <laughs> yeah. Straight in. Jumping in? Yeah. From what you see, the incline is... Unknown. So, like, we could slide in? Yeah. You have no idea, though, if the mm -mm. ground breaks out from underneath you there, or if it leads all the way into the monolith, though. We shine the light down. What do we see? There's so much breakage, and there's so much rock that it, it's a reasonable thing, but... There's such a narrow window, and it's so steep, and there are loose rocks everywhere. All it would take is a small adjustment to fall off to the side, and the rocking has stopped. The earth is there and steady, but aftershocks. I think I'm the only one who can go down there safely. I'm with you. I don't know about you guys, but I've spent the last couple of days... More than that, knowing that we know what's that way. Let's find out what's this way. Can you make it down all right? I will try to help you if I can. I'll give him my best shot. What do you think, Maria? Something it does seem so dangerous to do this. Something, you, you hear it though, right? Yeah. It's the there. Ambulance. Yeah. It's so close to the monolith, it is this iridescent hum, and you can feel but it. But it wants me, and part of me wants, if this is the end, I want to go out on my own terms and not on some rock's terms. I, I don't... I saw that I'd rather go in there than be eaten by one of those things out there. There's something about answering to this thing that makes me hate it. You know... I know I'm just a kid to you people, but we just watched one of our friends die. Are we really not gonna go down there and figure out what the hell is going on? We owe her that much. But it's... The right. What? No, it's clearly evil if... Of course it's evil. So is the giant trench. So are the things that have been trying to eat us. I'm just saying. What are you afraid of? I would rather, I would rather my friend have died 
for a reason other than me walking into the maw of a monster. Well, then you can go, but I'm going down there for answers. Is that your choice? Do you wish to go down there for answers? Corin places herself almost like a child ready to go down a slide. I will burn Vindictive. If there was a one, I would let you burn Vindictive. But there's no one. And you place yourself at the bottom as you look at this sliding ramp below you and almost like a just petulance in your heart, you just slide down with your one arm as you hold onto it. And the rocks are so loose as it's coming across you, you have reasonable control as you dive into it and you hold onto it. And you feel, <laughs> in a weird way, this is, this is the longest, most intense slide you've ever had in your life. And then you feel it start to air to the left. And you know that if this arm was working, you could put your hand down and you could use the momentum to steer back to the other right. But as you attempt to put your hand and put your shoulder down to get that momentum, instead it just tumbles and it falls and it rolls you off onto the other side and you fall through the darkness. There's... (laughs) There's a reason you wanted to do this. You knew what could happen. You knew that this was possible, and I know you hoped for it to happen. But why did you go down this slide? Why did you really want answers so bad, Corin? This is where my sister went. That hotel full of people, they all had to have gone somewhere. And you were hoping maybe they were inside the monolith. Part of it. Encapsulated it. The darkness comes around you, and you too see as Corrin silently, softly, just drifts off the ramp and into the night. Aki, thank you. Thank so you. So much for playing. Oh. I appreciate it. I really do. You thank really... you so much for having me at your table. Absolutely. This is the end of our scene. There is one candle left, but there is no truth to be spoken other than the world is dark. Mm. You two sit as you stand upon this island of rock, staring at this monument laid out in front of you in this cut earth that stands before you, and you watched Corrin with such drive and determination and desire to find what the monolith was unceremoniously flicked off into the night and the wasteful tragedy of it is the first thing that just lays into your head if this was a movie she would have made it it would have been landed into it she could have gleaned whatever touched it and maybe it would have lit up and turned into something and the whole world would have been right again but instead she just flipped into the earth both of you stand and stare and look at this laid earth in front of you. Maria, what's going through your mind? Well, I think, I think this has happened. I didn't realize, I didn't realize that it would have to- Feel love one feel love more one time. Feel love one more time. I, Thomas, I've lost, there's so much no one will know about me. And I, before this, years before this even happened, I, I I began building walls not to feel things anymore. And I thought there was a chance that that I might 
just a small chance, but if, that I might love something, someone. I just didn't realize it would have to be at the expense of losing them again. But I, I lost a child all over again. Cause that's all she was, was just a child. Yeah. And children just think they know what's right. They just think they know everything. Is that her fault? Yes, it is her fault. Why can't they just all grow up? Not enough time. I mean, I'm sure they would have. Any other circumstance? Any other slide? Can you fault him for trying? Yeah, I can. Both of you sit and are next to this tree. This tree that you've carved, this effigy of the monolith with four people holding hands together. A small aftershock hits <laughs> the area around you and it startles you, but you it's not even like it really does anything at this point. I'm gonna throw, there are rocks, right? Uh -huh. I'm just gonna throw <clears throat> rocks at the monolith. You just start throwing rocks at the monolith. And we'll join in. As you kind of are, feel this aftershock hit, you notice that rock, that little pathway that was on the back just cascades and crumbles down into nothing as it just falls on the earth beneath you, but neither of you really pay attention. You're here on this island with no food, no water. Both of you are bleeding, and you just throw rocks at the monolith, chucking dirt. There were eight days left. With any luck, we'll be down to one soon. Yes. Do we take our chance with the narrow escape? Try and climb out of here? You got one more in you? Oh, come on, Maria, I know you do. You know, what's, what's weird is I still, I just don't want to die. I, I don't want you to die. So why don't you two live for however long it takes to stay here on this rock together? Unless, Thomas, you are dedicated to leaving Maria behind to go and face that monolith. No. And I leave this moment, this picture for both of you, of two people who have found each other on this lost island under the earth with this carving of friendship behind you and this pure cut of earth in front of you. And it's at this point you truly do notice that above you the moon is so large that you don't see much else up in the sky other than it. Whatever purview you have is covered with the craterous expanse that is our closest celestial body. And you both know that by the time that comes to this planet, you will not be there to witness it. I think we start talking about trivial things, as yeah. people do. As people do, right? Our favorite cereals. And that's where we end our story. <laughs> that's where we end right there. Just two people talking about nothing. Thank you both awesome. so much for Thank joining you, us. I'm going to have to ask you both to leave the table, please. You got it. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you. See you on the other side. Yeah. 
There is only one last thing to do, and that is to listen to the final messages of our dearly departed characters. Hello. My name is Thomas Rhodes, and unless my name is on your wrist, I doubt very much that you've heard of me. I never could muster up the courage to stand up for anything, to man up, as my wife called it. Much of my life was spent tucked away at work, crafting and caring for devices that kept the world on time. And when you spend as much time as I did, surrounded by the rhythmic ticking of the future becoming the past, you'll learn to love the scarcity of life. I was in love. But times change. The world broke. And that broke us. And when the dark came to take her, I cracked. She needed a shield, but all I could do was watch. Do you think she will ever forgive me? All right, uh, whoever finds this, this is Maria Ogden, and uh, look, the universe or God or whatever you believe in, it's been, it's not been nice to me so far. It took, uh, it took a lot, it took my kid away from me. I've spent five years trying to just be be okay with that and try to forgive and all of that stuff but finally I, f I found I found a way to make things right uh, I might I might get to be with my baby girl again but before I do I'm gonna I'm gonna find some answers I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to the bottom of all this I've, I've learned a lot uh, and and I'm gonna put it to use um, because I think I've always thought my baby girl wants to see one more one more smile from me while I'm still here so going out there and uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring some people hope for Caroline it doesn't make sense you know one minute you can be walking down the street enjoying hot dog or ice cream and then the next you're realizing it's possible to lose everything in an instant. Watch your whole world disappear in an instant. Didn't know I cared about that until it was too late. I just always thought you'd be there. You're gone now and I can't find you and all I can think sometimes is, why wasn't it me? Yet here I am, trying to stay alive. But still I wonder, what's the point if you're not here? I guess you can't hear this, wherever you are, and when I'm gone too, it's probably too much to expect that I would be with you again. I wish I knew what they wanted. I'd give them anything at all if it meant that I'd be with you again. Hey, Mom and Dad, this is Virginia. I just wanted to tell you, because, you know, who knows how these things work out, but I believe I have hope, and I hope that you do too. I think that we're going to make it, and I know that not everybody does, but I know that our belief is strong enough, and that we can survive any obstacle that comes our way. So I'm going to do my best and I hope that I make you really proud and should anything happen, I hope that we all continue to believe. Bye. 